three, two, one. It belongs in a museum. Did I do that one last Indiana Jones episode? I don't know. I didn't I didn't re-listen to it before this one, but fuck it. We're doing indie again for a little bit. So uh I'm Adam from Sar- Sardonicast. This is your movie sex. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ralph the movie maker. Uh but this time you're talking about Harrison Ford. That's that's the difference. He belongs in a museum. Yes. At this point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the difference. Yeah. Whoa. I'm Alex from IHE. Um Fart poop duty. There you go. There's my addition for the intro. Oh yeah, nice. You like that? You like that, guys? Oh yeah, thank you. I was like, I was trying to remember a specific quote from Boss Baby, and I didn't really feel like going through all my notes to <laughs> land on something. So, uh, you have notes for Boss Baby? <laughs> I have notes for every movie we talk about on this podcast. <laughs> I, I don't. <laughs> I got notes on notes for Boss Baby. <laughs> The movie was so imprinted on my brain. I don't need notes. It was memorable. Mm. Yeah. So we all watched, before we get to the epic boss, the bo- <laughs> bossiest boss of all babies. The epic double feature. The epic, the most epic featured of baby features. Of boss babies. We saw the inverse. We saw a very old man <laughs> in Indiana Jones 5, the dial of destiny. <laughs> That's true. I didn't think about the... Uh... That's a funny, like, I don't know, theme. Yeah, we're yeah. Benjamin Buttoning here. We're doing old first. Right. <laughs> we did a movie about babies, and then we did a movie about an old man. A geriatric. <laughs> <I'm> a... <laughs> geriatric patient. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and to, to be perfectly honest, the only reason I watched this is for both of you, because you, you said you'd watched it. Oh, that's nice. There's a potential like, hey, we could watch this the next episode. I was never going to fucking watch this shit. I was never going to watch it. Mm. And I watched it in theaters for you guys, so you're welcome. So you enjoyed it then? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, this is a weird one. Uh, how old is Harrison Ford now? Well, I'm just looking. He was born in 1942. He's 80. Good Lord. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. Quite a weird movie, this. Um, directed by James mm-hmm. Mangold, like, first and foremost. Not a bad director. I actually like yeah. his movies quite a lot. Um, I love um, Logan. Logan's great. Yeah, Logan's awesome. Um, Ford v. Ferrari's good. Yeah, he's done some goodies. Um, 310 to Yuma. Uh, yeah, 310 to Yuma's great. Uh, but yeah, it's a weird movie. I forgot that that was Mangold. 310 to Yuma? Huh. Yeah, pretty sure. Yeah, Girl Interrupted as well. He's, yeah, he's, he's got a, I don't know, he's got a broad catalogue, but none of them are really that poppy or pulpy. I mean... Quite like Indiana Jones is. That's true. He's got some good movies under his belt, but he's not a director that I could point out and be like, this is one of his films without hearing that he directed it beforehand. Like, he doesn't have a distinct mm. style is the problem. I can't watch mm. one of his movies and be like, yeah, this is really mangled. Like, I could watch a fucking, like, you know, like Tony Scott or like oh yeah michael mann or like quentin tarantino or like michael goy <laughs> it doesn't even have to be like a fucking big name you know neil breen, <laughs> neil breen. yeah <laughs> yeah there's right. certain directors where you know it's from them right yeah this is not one something the red letter media the red letter media review pointed out it's like he's not like a really like a com- comedy director like a comedic no tone director because like logan's very dour and yeah i guess he doesn't have much experience in that yeah you need like a little bit more like lightheartedness and that's like something spielberg balanced like really well like the humor and the the action and the 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 tension and the horror even like in temple of doom you know that's a pretty dark movie and this is like uh you know there's there's like jokes thrown in there but they don't really feel organic I didn't really like the flea bag girl in it, like, like not that, because I was like defending her last episode. I don't, I, you know, there's a lot of like sexist stuff thrown at her. But who was that again? The his like goddaughter in the film. Yeah, she was a little too quippy to where it was like it, it was hard to take anything going on seriously. Like you know. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, I was okay. thinking of, like, you know, Raiders of the Lost Ark when he's fighting, like, the big guy in front of, like, the propeller plane. Like, there's no quips, really, you know, because he's too busy getting his ass kicked to, like, you know, make a quip. <laughs> like, you take the action seriously. Here, it's just, like, a lot of dumb jokes, like, getting thrown around, and none of it's really funny. Like, that was a big takeaway for me for the movie, was it wasn't really funny. It wasn't really that no. funny. No. 
Because it's, it's some pretty uh, big shoes to fill, isn't it? Like, yeah. Four Spielberg movies, um, and they couldn't even do it with the fourth one, you know, the Crystal Skull or whatever. They kind of fumbled yeah. then. It, it was almost out of, the character was out of time then. And what was that, 2008 or whenever it was? Like, yeah. He kind of belongs in the 80s. That's where this character kind of lives and should die. Because um, <laughs> mm -hmm. it, it just feels bizarre, especially because this last week I saw like Mission Impossible, you know, and it's like just a completely different caliber and it feels like a modernized like action franchise and it, 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 oh, it yeah. can't really keep up. It's just, it's, just, it's just this strange thing of like an 80 year old man like leading a it is very action strange. serial. Like it just doesn't make sense. Um, and the, the movie doesn't lean into it enough either. You probably could have done something a little bit more clever with that maybe and leaned into the oldness more or made some kind of deeper commentary, but it's also just trying to be like a, a silly pulpy Indiana Jones movie and it can't really decide where it wants to sit with that because man, I, I don't know about you guys, but this this one was boring as fuck. God damn it. Like that middle section was sagging so much. It's, it's two mm -hmm. and a half hours long. Why? Why? Yeah, way too long. Absolutely. Yeah. Like my whole, uh, uh, my whole crowd was like either old people. Yes, lots of old people who were like checking their, they were checking like their their medicine. Like, oh, is it time to take my medicine? Like they kept taking out their phones <laughs> and like checking their watches or whatever. Or there were like young people who were just like completely bored. Like they just kept talking and taking out their phones. I had to shush people a couple times. Yeah, just playing Fortnite or whatever. That's what my audience was doing. Like they they just kept leaving. Yeah, right. On yeah. Their phone. Well, because right. they were dragged there by their like parents or grandparents. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. they're like looking after them. Yeah. It's not even for them. They're watching this old man right and, and you know i love harrison ford he's great on like the conan o'brien podcast recently like he's mm -hmm. hilarious but you know that mm -hmm. being said like he's an 80 year old man like in this action movie it's like you know like what are we really doing here like can't you find like someone else to be indiana jones but i guess at the same time you can't do that because indiana jones is so tied to harrison ford you mm -hmm. can't really like make a movie without him and that's like where they're kind of stuck because they already tried that with uh crystal skull and mutt that was yeah. clearly what they were trying to do, but like no one liked it. They were gonna pass the torch, <laughs> and then spoiler <laughs> alert: they really overcorrected with that one. They're like, actually, he's dead now. <laughs> yeah. He died between the last movie and now. It's yeah, like oops. it's kind of weird yeah. and dark. <laughs> like the, it's yeah. kind of bizarre thing to just say and not even like film any of it. Also. Not even say his name, like they, yeah. like his son, my son died or whatever. Oh yeah, leave it open in case it's yeah. like, oh, he had a second son, just in case they want to bring him back. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, that was odd, right? I wonder. I wonder if they would have kept Shia if he hadn't been like, I don't know, he's got like some problematic accusations or something. I don't know. Like, yeah, or something or like that. Just not like his inclusion as a character. I don't. I know. think yeah, people just didn't like Crystal Skull, so it's it's weird even making this to begin with, in my opinion. Like mm. for all the things we've already said, um, and that just bloated runtime. Like I, I don't know how you guys felt about that first. It's like it felt like forty minutes. The like opening oh, action yeah. scene. Um, it just goes on and on and on with the de-aged Harrison. <laughs> yeah, with the de-aged yeah. Harrison. Yeah. That was a huge part of the movie. A huge part of the movie for no reason. Yeah, what do you think of the CGI on that? I couldn't get into it because of that that factor. Um, yeah, it's so distracting to me. I mean, there's a few factors. Well, yeah. Um, well, yeah. One that it's so long, and the the de-aging Harrison Ford. Like in some shots, it looked okay, but in a lot of shots, it looked very odd. Like it looked like a CGI effect. The overwhelming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. The, the, this whole de-aging trend, like it's it's just I've only seen it used like really well, like once or twice. You know, I liked it in Blade Runner twenty forty nine exactly because it was kind of the point that it's supposed to look off. You know, it's supposed to be like an android monster, but here you're yeah. supposed to like believe it, and it and that's like a quick scene. They didn't change his voice. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That too is, uh, sounds like old. And it also looks better. It also looks better in Blade Runner twenty forty. Even if they were trying to pass it off as like not like an android. It still looks way better. Like yeah, it, it's it's under mm -hmm. the it's under the specific conditions and angles and like Villeneuve is just like much more of a competent director, especially when it comes to like digital effects. Something that was made very apparent 
in 2049. Yeah, it's more clear, like, what he wants. Yeah, yeah. And it's such a restrained scene in Blade Runner. Like, yeah, the character kind of just walks in and stands yeah. still, whereas this is, like, full action scenes, and he'll yeah, the train, and it's all this craziness. Yeah. They literally just, like, filmed the entire section, and were like, we're gonna CG over his ty- entire face. We're gonna, like, deep fake this shit, thinking it would be fine. Mm-hmm. Just be like, oh, yeah, it'll just be dark. You know, you won't be able to see all of it, so it'll probably be fine. It's like, uh-oh. It still looks like shit, and not only does it look like shit, his voice sounds really old, and so it's really off-putting. Like that's not <laughs> that's not young Indy's voice. <laughs> he still yeah. sounds like an old man. There's like a shot he's jumping from like train car to train car, and it looks like a cartoon. Like just the animation yeah. on it, it looks so bad. It is, and that's um, yeah, we're talking about the de aging. That's mostly like Lucasfilm. Mm-hmm. that like does that because they did that with like you know in that Bubba Fett show they de-age Mark Hamill yeah the Mandalorian as well and in uh you know uh, Leia and like Rogue One or Rogue One Tarkin yeah. right it's, it's mainly them and yeah I don't I tend to like the Lucasfilm stuff for, like I like a lot of their stuff recently so I was kind of like surprised by this kind of how like bloated and dated it felt like the action um, that was a good comparison to bring up Alex, like the Mission Impossible movie, because those mm. have some really memorable action scenes, the, the new one, like fun car chases. And this, the, the, the action scenes were so mediocre, like they just came and went and I forgot about them. Very mediocre action scenes. And those are the best parts of Indiana Jones movies usually is the action. So... I was shocked by that. Yeah. Each one of that original trilogy has at least one or two like incredibly memorable set pieces that sit in your mind. And oh, yeah. Often the best ones have like a sense of realism to them. You know, they're mm, like right. clearly using a bunch of real stuff, no green screen. This all looked like it looked like a video game. Yeah. This one looked like fake. Yeah. This look, it looked like a PS5 game, the whole, the whole movie. <laughs> yeah. It's like good CGI, but it looked, you know, it still looks like CGI. It's still, it doesn't have that great. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. Like, I still don't think it's that bad of a film. Like it doesn't come together, but a lot of scenes in a vacuum are just fine to me, and like they work fine, they they do the job. But then just when they're all stitched together, it just it just doesn't work. Like it, it doesn't flow. It doesn't yeah tell a compelling story. Uh, even though a lot of the pieces are there, the, the characters just suck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they did like Teddy sucked the kid. That was that kid sucked. And so did, like, Antonio Banderas is in the movie. He's fucking wasted. Seems like it. He's barely in it. It's like, oh, it's my old friend. Yeah. They should have swapped that kid for Banderas' character. Um, yeah. I that role or something. You know? Yeah. That was pretty wasteful. What I felt was really missing from this movie was the cinematography. Because, mm. you know, yeah. like Spielberg yeah. or not, like, he has, he, he does a lot of really competent, like, wide shots and, like, action set piece shots where you can see everything happening and it makes sense how they're filming it and you get a nice visual and it feels a lot more expansive and not, like, this weird closed, contained, like, really narrow frame shit and it's like... Even when they're filming the yeah. action scenes in this movie, like you can barely tell what's going on because it's just so close. Mm-hmm. Like you never get a good wide shot. Yeah, it, not not like right memorable. Like even Crystal Skull had some good moments with that. Like I remember when like Harrison Ford or like Mutt are eating like at the bar there, yeah, Mutt steals a drink and then Harrison Ford puts it back. Like that's like fun. Like you know, little things like that. And there's nothing like that in this movie. I felt, yeah. And uh, yeah, it's just like, yeah, mediocre in a lot of ways. Very, very meh. Very meh. <laughs> very bland, very boring, and just way too long. Like, how long was fucking Crystal Skull? Shorter than this. Why is every fucking movie so long now? I don't know, but it looks at Temple of Doom. Temple of Doom's like an hour 58. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. For a film like this. Like, that needed to be yeah. some two hours. I like Temple of Doom much more now. Good. Yeah, same. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love that movie. I mean, even before seeing this movie, but definitely now, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I just don't get the whole... Uh, I thought it was kind of funny in the beginning, though, when Harrison Ford was like an old man and he like got out of bed with in his underwear or whatever. And he's like, you know, he goes downstairs because kids are playing music. And he's like banging on the door. Like, hey, shut up, you damn kids. Yeah, threatening them. <laughs> that was actually funny to me. It's a, it's a relatable one for the audience. 
Yeah, it's relatable and it's like okay at least we're acknowledging that he's like you know an old man and that was like i felt i felt like the movie should have done more of that kind of stuff yeah, but it does exactly. just kind of devolve into like well we got to try to be cool we got to try to like throw in a ton of action to appeal to the the kiddies out there who watch like avengers and whatever and yeah it just did not work like it felt so dated and yeah it's good you bring up avengers actually because that, that was part of what was like bugging me about this movie is that just, it's just so out of its time like ironically with it being about what it is with the dial of destiny and everything but it, mm -hmm. it, it just doesn't make sense to make an indiana jones movie in this time period like that they were so restricted by the concept and by harrison being 80 years old and all these different things and like yeah. we've seen decades of films inspired by the pop action of indiana jones we do have avengers and mission impossible and we we've seen it all frankly and like the scale and everything so mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just too much like it it it, it, it can't find any angle, you know, like it, even that Uncharted movie from a year or two ago, that's basically, it's like this weird incestuous circle of like the Uncharted games being inspired <laughs> by Indiana Jones and now we've come back to yeah. like a, Also with Antonio Banderas. That's true. True. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that, <laughs> that film was like unbearable as well um, for different reasons. But Yeah, that was worse than this one even. It was worse. Yeah, much worse, much worse. <laughs> yeah, <it's>, yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it's just like you're, you're out of time. I'm afraid. Um, this just this just doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. And, and I think audiences are agreeing. You gotta go use the dial of destiny. Go back to the best. Oh yeah, well that was. Do we want to just like talk about the ending? Yes, <laughs> that was weird. Yeah, can we talk spoilers? The last half hour. Yeah, that was so odd that I almost kind of liked it. Should have started that earlier. No, I I fully loved that. Yeah, I was like. Oh man, that, that's quite quite <laughs> a good I'm, subversion there. I'm not like, the it's only like, one then. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I actually enjoyed that. Yeah, no, because it was like the yeah when because the the villain is uh, Mads Mikkelsen, who's like a super Nazi. He's such a Nazi that he wants to go <laughs> back in time and like take Hitler's place and do it properly. Yeah, that's very funny. And that's like kind of a funny. That is a poppy. Uh, motivation for him um, but like he gets the calculations wrong and then winds up in ancient Greece <laughs> then, like straight up go back in time yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that was awesome except he doesn't get it wrong because they found out that it only goes back to that one point in time anyway and that Harrison Ford was actually just talking at his ass just one of these loops yeah yeah it's like oh he was looking for help yeah you know he was trying to get help in the battle yeah but like by that point in the movie i was like so checked out and then when it did that i was like oh this this is kind of interesting this is crazy and I, not like the feeling of when the aliens show up in crystal skull where it's like this dumb it's, this doesn't gel this like doesn't make yeah. sense there's not like the historical angle mm -hmm. yeah the historical angle yeah yeah because yeah, they set it up at the beginning where he's like teaching his class about ancient greece and yeah phoebe waller's whole thing is about that time period and yeah, mm -hmm. so bringing it bringing it full circle to that is is kind of fun yeah. to me. It takes way too long to get there, and the oh, way yeah. it concludes is kind of a shame as well. Like, yeah, I was kind of liking like if they were willing to just leave him there in ancient Greece, that'd be kind of a cool ending for me. That would have been cool, honestly. I would have loved that. Yeah, that would have been great. Just like end the character there. The character ends like living in ancient Greece because it, it yeah. did work for me because it was like wish fulfillment for the Indiana Jones character. Like he's an archaeologist. Mm -hmm. He loves history and he gets to like live in ancient. Yeah, it's like his dream come true. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I thought that was awesome. But then I guess some studio head came in like, nah, you got to end the movie with, you know, he's got to meet Marion again. And <laughs> yeah, cause we, we need to be able to make another one. Yeah, we need to be able to make more. Yeah, right. But it's like, <laughs> why? Like, he, the dude is 80. Like, you can't make another one at this point unless you recast <laughs> yeah. him. And no one wants and to watch that, uh, you know? Yeah, and it's bombing, of course. He's probably sold his likeness to Disney so they can make an AI one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but no one likes the, the de-aging thing. And, you know, this movie did kind of bomb which is crazy it did it made money but it bombed because it cost so much money to make and yeah that's just like we've been saying this a lot about these summer movies they cost too much money to make and this one's like 300 something million dollars and yeah like why do these movies cost so much if they cut the runtime they'd be cutting the budget yeah yeah if they trimmed out a fifth of the movie they'd ha they'd be spending a fifth of the money maybe yeah you know? but it's like you said adam like they want you know, more people to spend more time on Disney Plus, so they make the movies like mm -hmm. inflated run times. Yeah, but I don't understand why they don't have like extended versions on Disney Plus and have like shorter ones in, 
in the theater, you know, if that's really what they wanted to yeah, do. Yeah, that's what they do with the Hobbit movies. Yeah, because like HBO yeah. Max is like, or Max now, a bunch of. Because <laughs> then you yeah. have to give people a choice of whether or not to watch the longer one. And if they choose to watch the shorter one, that's the wrong choice. Yeah. Mm. For them. <laughs> it's too much content. It's too yeah. much. Yeah, the movie was so long. I, so they get to the, they go back in time and I like that in concept, but some of the shit that they showed was just like so fucking cheap looking. Like some of the, some of the action <laughs> moments where it's like, okay, you just obviously sped these characters up, you know, or like it's mm-hmm. just terribly framed. It's like, fuck, like they're wearing costumes, but like none of it feels real or genuine. Like even without the CG, it feels like so fucking weird and cheap. Like I don't know what the hell he was doing with this this section, but that was just bizarre. Yeah. And then she punches him in the face, <laughs> <laughs> and then he blacks out and he's back. Yeah, that, that really like sapped all the momentum away from that moment because it was kind of winning me over like as it was going into that, and it was like this is this is so crazy. It's kind of working for me. Um, yeah. And then right as it's kind of wrapping up and getting to its emotional crescendo, then yeah, Phoebe Waller knocks him out. And then that's the conclusion. Yeah. They should have went into the clouds, into the past at like, I don't know, 40 minutes through the movie. That would have made a better film instead of just like right at the end. So that's like when the prologue was wrapping up. I know. Minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like what, what happened between the beginning of the movie and then like... We had a prologue, <laughs> then he got captured on a boat, yeah. and then they tricked Mods Mickelson into thinking like it was somewhere else because she's like, oh, I'll just pretend like I know the whole decoding thing. Yeah, that scene was, that seems yeah. kind of dumb. They went the opposite direction, and Mods with his binoculars looks and says, they're going east and not west, and immediately figures out what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It makes no sense, because he's just like, yeah, let's just follow them and follow where they go. <laughs> yeah, so it's like the, their whole plan is so stupid, right? Yeah. You skipped like two half an hour chase sequences as well, because there's the whole <laughs> Yeah, like, well. That are totally forgettable. Yeah, the whole exactly. thing about her getting married to this other guy, like, and yeah, yeah, yeah they, they chase her through the fucking and that that doesn't go yeah. anywhere it's almost like they're setting her up to be uh indiana jones but yeah the chase sequences in this film i was getting flashbacks to my experience watching the jurassic world dominion where like chase the chase <laughs> oh, yeah. sequences in this film i was kind of just like struggling to stay awake i'm like this is a sleepy movie it even looks the same yeah that like chase scene and what it looks like exactly the same as like that velociraptor chase or whatever in jurassic world dominion i did the exact same thing in this film as i did with the, with that other movie i went and i <laughs> grabbed the beer from concession in the middle of the movie <laughs> there are two <laughs> movies i've done that with maybe in the past decade and it was jurassic world dominion and this one <laughs> I was just like, I'm not really missing anything. Oh yeah, let me let me just mention this while I remember it. So there was like this couple, they walked in when there was like 20 minutes of the movie left. I have no idea like why. But they like walked in with popcorn and concessions and everything to, and they sat down. <laughs> they were early for the next one. But they must have thought they walked into the wrong movie because they see like, you know, like Roman times or whatever, <laughs> like, you know, the ancient <laughs> yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. battle. They must have been like, what? I thought this was an Indiana Jones movie. What the fuck is this? <laughs> what the hell is going on yeah (laughs) i don't know so silly i I did enjoy that last part that was kind of you know so dumb that it was fun and but then yeah they just kind of like they they negate that by the end of the movie and Mm -hmm. it just becomes the same crap yeah you kind of soured me on this yeah because i i think i would i think i liked it more watching it than like now but yeah there's not much i remember about it not much action that's like stands out or character moments. No, like those those other movies have great like you know even just like dialogue scenes, character moments with great mm-hmm. shots. Even Crystal Skull has those. Yeah, so yeah, I've really soured on this movie. Yeah, there were one or two character moments I didn't mind. Like um, you mentioned the whole mutt death thing. These things are in spoilers, I guess. I did I didn't mind that scene where Phoebe Waller's asking right. like, what, "What would you do if you could turn back time?" I'd have it so Mutt didn't die in the war or whatever, you know, that was, <laughs> that was okay. Um, but again, yeah, it's just too much of it, way too much. You could just, you could come at this with a pair of scissors and trim an hour probably out of this and it'd be 
just kind of fun and okay because i thought parts of the uh chase scene in morocco were kind of fun um but by that point it's you're so exhausted already and it's like the goals <laughs> yeah. really aren't changing enough like they're just you know why the fuck was the opening scene that long i, I, I don't know why <laughs> like well for what purpose it wasn't fun <laughs> like <laughs> Wasn't exciting. No, yeah, it's like fun for 10 minutes, but then it just keeps going and going because it's like, yeah, it's establishing the MacGuffin, it's establishing Indy's relationship with the the British guy who's Phoebe Waller's uh, dad. But that's kind of all it really Mm. needs to do. And Mads as well, who gets like hit by that. Yeah, that. On the top of the train. And yeah, he gets so. hit in the face, and then like they never bring that up. I thought he would have like, you know, a miss- be missing an eye or some huge scar or something. But yeah, they never really like. Yeah, like a cool scar or something. Yeah, that would have been cool, but yeah, they don't really. Yeah. Like there's just like so many scenes, yeah, that I would cut out. Like there's this scene where like Mads Mickelson has food delivered to him in his room. <laughs> it's like you know it's like a african-american man so he's like racist to him or something it's like okay did you really need that scene that's right yeah because he helped he helped the america the americans get to the moon right that's like why they're, they're yeah helping him. <laughs> they're using his science his nazi science yeah it's that's odd and then like the cia agent that just like gets killed like halfway through the movie <laughs> it's like all right like there's like so much shit in the movie that like i like just remembered just now or like even the whole opening there's like like it starts with like indiana jones he's like he's getting hung but then there's a bomb that comes through the ceiling and i don't know It, it, it like goes on for so fucking long you can't even remember like certain scenes mm-hmm. they just like gloss over in my brain yeah, it makes you feel late to years old by the time it's over. It, 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 this movie didn't really need to be made. <laughs> it didn't really need what? to be made. Yeah, that's why I couldn't escape. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It could have been like, it's honestly long enough to be a miniseries. It could have been yeah. Like, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> that might have been better. There were kind of less member berries than I was expecting as well um, on that, that Yeah, that is yeah, true. Yeah, they had like three. <laughs> yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. eels are like snakes. This belongs in a museum. Yeah, this belongs in a museum. He says it like twice. I have the same hat. <laughs> it was really yeah. simple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So do do either of you have a definitive answer to whether or not this is better than Crystal Skull for your own perspective? I don't think so. At first I was thinking it was. It's it's pretty even. Yeah. Uh, it was like about the same maybe i think i like crystal skull more at least at least it's the people yeah. who like made it like messing it up you know there's, there's like a different <laughs> patina over yeah. it when it's uh like this this gross like modern day disney and like all these people trying to mimic this thing from the past you know there's like a whole different thing um it's bad in like a different way it never like i yeah. guess the the highs are kind of higher in uh crystal skull and the lows are lower this is more just kind of boring right down the middle doesn't really move the needle at all like you're never emotionally invested enough to even get upset at a fridge scene or swinging through the jungle with the monkeys scene like it never goes that far but it also like never has anything that interesting going on either mm-hmm. yeah except for that ending which was which yeah, was fucking wild. even even the ending it's like it's like a breath of fresh air of like oh you're finally doing something and it's not really pulled off well in any way whatsoever it's like it's one of those <laughs> it, it just it feels better because the rest of the movie was so boring like oh thank christ you're doing yeah something. but <laughs> yeah something's really, happening cool <laughs> like removed from the context of how boring the rest of the movie is it's not like it's not that crazy yeah it would have been cool if they just did it earlier. I don't know. Like, just start the movie that way so that you have, like, a better jumping off point. Maybe have more of the film. <laughs> like, do fucking Ash versus Evil Dead or some shit, you know? Just do something crazy. You've got... It's the last movie you're making anyway. You might as well just fucking do it. What are you scared of, you pussies? What are you scared of, you cowards? <laughs> well, that's what, what I yeah. was scared of was with this whole... The whole Dial of Destiny, like, time travel thing. I was scared they were going to be, like, de-aging, jumping into the old movies or something awful like that, you know? Like, oh, that would yeah. be, like, worst case scenario. Yeah, multiverse. Yeah. yeah, and they luckily didn't go that level. But, yeah, it never really justifies its own existence either. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, right. I'm done talking about this one, if you are. <laughs> um. Yeah, is there anything else of note? Like, what else even happens? That's kind of the whole movie. There was one scene... The score is John Williams' score. We didn't even mention John Williams' score because there's nothing yeah. really to mention. Yeah. No, it's, it's just like recycled. They played the main theme at the beginning and then the end credits. 
Yeah, I was quite disappointed yeah. by that. Which, I mean, is good for me because I thought it was spammed in the other movies. But yeah, it was really unnoticeable <laughs> for, throughout the entire movie. Like, do something at least. I love yeah. the music in the original trilogy. I, I, um, yeah, I love the theme. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, there's just nothing really memorable about anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kind of just wasted in this movie. And yeah, like Karen Allen. Like, yeah, you could have done something where she was in the movie more and they go back in time. That could have been fun. I don't know, <laughs> like with her, but she's like barely in the movie. I think she said she wanted to be in it more, but she's like, I don't know why they only asked me for one scene. I would have been in it. <laughs> like, yeah, what, like what else she got going on? You could have like thrown her in. She's only in like one scene at the very end. I don't know. That was kind of a waste. The whole movie felt like a waste. And uh, the Sala character, um, you know, Gimli, when he shows up. Um, yeah. I love that actor. He's got like a, he, he has that poppy fun presence, but he's only, again, mm-hmm. just kind of sprinkled in a little bit. Um, yeah, right. I would have been fine with those member berries. Mm-hmm. If, he, if he went on adventure with him, that could have been fun. Like the two old men. <laughs> that could have been something. Yeah. Sure, why not? But instead you got Teddy. Amazing. Who? Amazing character. He's so <laughs> memorable. Yeah. <laughs> there was there was one part that kind of bugged me from like a weird logic practical sort of thing. They like kidnap him and then they're going mm-hmm. into the protest and he's like trying to blend in with the protesters kind of and then he punches them and then he, you know, ducks into the crowd and their response is like, okay, we're going to shoot the gun once into the air and then everybody like fucking video game NPCs just like ducks without doing anything. And then Indy's like, Oh no. And he's the only one standing and they're like, haha, there he is. It's like, I don't know if you fire a gun in a crowd, surely there's some people that are going to like run. Surely there's some people that are going to panic or something. Right? Not everybody's just going to like duck and be completely silent and not move. Like that was fucking weird. That was like a video game moment. Like, I don't know that, that just that was so awkward. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of video game moments in this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think it was trying to be funny as well. Like but it just doesn't matter. They could have thrown a, they could have thrown short round in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was just saying. Could have had that. like an old short round in the movie. That would have been cool. Yeah. Honestly. That would have been cool. Maybe they couldn't get him. Maybe he was busy. Yeah. That would have been great. It was like, yeah, old short round, old indie and, you know, uh, Sala and Marion going on an adventure. But like, yeah, let's just throw in them. Like, it's already like a nostalgia bait movie. Like, you might as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, who even cares, you know? Who cares? I guess, yeah, that's kind of why I'm, I'm not even that upset because we... The, the nice ending of the trilogy was already ruined by Crystal Skull anyway, so it's like, well... I guess it's just another <laughs> one. Cool. Whatever. Just flush yeah. it down the drain. Nice. But it's such a waste because, like, you can't make another one after this unless you get a new actor, which is a... That's a waste, too. They just fucking get Short Round to continue it, okay? He's 30 years younger. <laughs> He's still old also, but... Adventures of Short Round. Yeah. Yeah, like a, like a spinoff. Yeah. That would be fucking cool. If you did Short Round to continue indie, you know how fucking cool that would be? I think we're ready. <laughs> I think we're ready. I think people would be into that, yeah. <laughs> I would be into that. They could have set that up in this, yeah, but they didn't. They didn't set it up. Instead, they got the, the flea bag woman who was, who was not that great. They should have set movie. that up. Damn. It seemed like they were setting her up to be indie, and, but I'm like, please don't do that. Mm-hmm. That would not be a good idea. Yeah, I was scared they were going that way, but mm-hmm. yeah. They always could. And uh, Kathleen Kennedy could be like, yep, love it. We'll see. The AI would do it. Yeah, the AI will do it, or or Kathleen Kennedy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> DH Kathleen Kennedy is Indiana Jones. Like with Star Wars or whatever, you know, like you don't need like Harrison Ford to make like a Star Wars movie. You can like make spinoffs of Star Wars because the world is so expansive and like, you know, there's tons of characters or whatever history. This is like, you know, like you can't have an Indiana Jones movie without Harrison Ford, really. He's like no. the central focus of everything. So you can't really do that. And if you try, it kind of like falls apart. And they're corny adventure serials. Like it just, <laughs> an old man doing this stuff just is crazy. Like it doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> work. It's not fun to watch, you know? Yeah, exactly. I'm giving this one a four out of 10. It's the same that I rated the other one. It's uh don't remember much about the, uh, the crystal skull, but I guess I landed on the same number. Um, it would be more of a disaster if I was, you know, that hyped about the original films. I think they're fine. But yeah, this one's just yeah. very much worse. I'd give it a two and a half out of five. Man, I wish I could rate it higher, but 
it's just not that special. Yeah, I'm right there with you, Ralph, on the two and a half star. I, d- I just imagine the Crystal Skull in this movie is like just old Indiana Jones fever dreams, and the actual ending of the movies is the uh, the sunset shot from the third Crusade. And that, that's where it ends, like in my mind. I just forget about these. They're just, just a waste of time. It's yeah. a bad idea from every angle you look at it, and it's really not that surprising that it's... Uh, kind of bombing the way it has. I think it was like a team of a hundred animators just on the de-aging stuff alone. It's like, why are you doing this with your money, man? Yeah, such a waste. You know, bloated budget, bloated everything. It's just such a mm-hmm. such a dumb idea. <laughs> why didn't people come yeah. to see this movie? Why weren't they excited for it? Why? Why? <laughs> they just act surprised. <laughs> yeah. It's a bomb. The ring in that flannel is so dry. All their IPs just. Man. Are we done yeah. with old men? Yeah, they're like, don't listen to the critics. Like it's gaudy. Yeah. It's fucking <laughs> it's Indiana Jones. Like it should be doing well. I mean, come on. It, ideally, yeah. Yeah, it's such a waste. Yeah, like no one cares. I mean, it's like, <laughs> yeah, like the dude, dude's eighty. That's the saddest part. Yeah, it's just like come and gone. Like in a weekend, no one cares. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, right. It's, there's so much competition out there, right? It's it's shocking they thought this could like compete. In the like, I think Elemental's doing better, probably. Yeah, I think you're so right. At least it's like you know for kids. It's the only kids movie that's out, so it has like that and that fucking Kraken movie that bombed horribly. <laughs> but but yeah. it's really like Elemental's the only one. <laughs> <laughs> Elemental's not even doing, like, there's these weird fucking really deceptive headlines coming about out about Elemental. Like, Elemental is Pixar's uh, highest grossing film since Frozen 2. And it's like, okay, <laughs> that was <Frozen> 2. <laughs> directly before, that was directly before the pandemic. Okay? Like, mm-hmm. half of the movies they released between, most of them, they dumped on Disney+, Plus, <laughs> right? Of course yeah. it's doing yep. better than those. <laughs> like, people, yeah. everybody's, like, quote-tweeting this, like, whoa, I thought it was doing bad. Apparently it's doing great. It's like, this is very deceptive. This is this is just a way to fudge the numbers. Yeah, know? it's all this deceptive headline. But yeah, Frozen 2 is not even a Pixar movie. That's Disney animation. Unless the headline said Disney animation. That is a weird thing to say, yeah. <laughs> yeah, unless it's just a Disney movie. It's like the highest grossing Disney animated movie, maybe. I think they said, eh, I think they said Pixar, but that is a weird way to phrase it because that's not even a Pixar movie. You're right. Well, that's just, that's not even deceptive. That's just wrong. Yeah, that's just, that's just incorrect. That's just factually incorrect. <laughs> that's very funny. Frozen yeah. 2 is it Pixar. Yeah. <laughs> just say, uh, you, you can see the 300 million on the screen a lot more with like the latest Mission Impossible. Um, which is like a similar length yeah. and similar budget. Um, and yeah, it definitely pays off more in that than the 80 year old man running around. For me, it's just hard to see. Yeah, 300 million on any movie at this stage. That's just like a crazy amount of money. It's eye watering. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's so inflated. It's so cr- insane. I don't know what is going yeah. on with that. Yeah. I think just like everything costs more now. Yeah. That new Mission Impossible was, um, it was good. I walked out, out toward the end. Yeah, I watched it, but I had to walk out toward the end because I felt sick. But I'm going to oh, see man. it again. Yeah. I got like a little stomach bug. But oh, I watched man. like up to like the, when he like does the big stunt where he like you drives the off the, okay, cool. the cliff. Yeah. yeah. So okay, I missed like the last the half end. hour. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's good though. It's a good movie. Very exciting. Like great chase scenes. I love that chase in like Italy. No, I was into it. Um I still think Fallout's better, but... Um, yeah, especially yeah, compared yeah. to Indiana Jones, that, like, whole chase. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. all the fun gimmicks. Yeah. yeah, it was really fun, that scene. Awesome movie. Is it awesome in the same way that the last one was awesome? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't yeah. feel like... I don't feel like you'll think much differently <laughs> about it. I do yeah, like Fallout much more. Yeah, yeah, I thought Fallout was oh, better. Thought Fallout, yeah, yeah I, I like Fallout more, too, because, like, the yeah. whole Henry Cavill villain character is interesting. And yeah, I watched yeah. Fallout again, actually, Alex, and with my mom, I watched it on, like, my TV. We we loved it. I like it much better now. Yeah. Like, the first time I saw it, yeah. No, I think that's really where it's going to peak as a franchise. Yeah. That and, like, the, the Brad Bird one. Those yeah. are my two favorite. If I, if I could just, like, take Mission Impossible Fallout and watch the action scenes and then just like go to the other room and make a sandwich during the non-action scenes. (laughs) You don't like the Alec Baldwin scenes? What are you talking about? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Perfect time. Speaking of Alec Baldwin, we had a film recommendation from Ralph 
A double feature. Yeah. In a week. Yeah. <laughs> Called Boss Baby. Yeah, Alec Baldwin before he killed someone. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> before he killed so, someone with a gun no here's the question are they making a boss baby three and is it going to be without him <laughs> right they could do it without him because that uh that secret life of pets like you know louis ck's in the first one they recast him with pat and oswald That's in the right. second one yeah so they just get another fat comedian <laughs> yeah it's not like the target demographic would notice if they swapped out all of the voice actors <laughs> pretty sure he's not in yeah, the boss right. baby netflix show or something right I'm going to make a wild guess. Let's see. Oh, yeah. There's like two spin-off shows. I totally shows, forgot about that. I should have recommended that, too. Oh, well, I'm glad you forgot about that. Did we not, did we not watch all that? Because I watched every episode of those as well. So. Oh. Back in oh, business, man. back feel... in the crib, Christmas bonus. There's three of them, apparently. <laughs> I feel um. left behind now. <laughs> and yeah. it is not Alec Baldwin in Back in Business. And... I don't see Alec Baldwin in Back in the Crib, and I don't see Alec Baldwin <laughs> in Christmas Bonus. So that's usually how those spinoff shows go, is they just don't yeah. cast the name actors. It'd be too expensive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so Boss Baby, what is there What is there to say? Oh, yeah, well, you should describe the movie. You should describe the plot. Yeah. What is it? What's, the, what's Boss Baby? It's about a Boss Baby. It's uh-huh. about a... <laughs> Well, really, if you like want to actually talk about like what the movie's about, it's about another, it's about the boss baby's brother named Tim, <laughs> who's played by Tobey Maguire as an adult, which is funny. <laughs> yeah. I did not expect that. It's a Tobey Maguire in the credits. And it's about him. And then the, the, the parents get a baby who's the boss baby. And it's about like them not getting along and they're like brotherly conflict, I guess, but. The way the movie sets it up is so bizarre. It doesn't make any sense to me because <laughs> it's like the, the baby comes in through like a taxi cab. He just like shows up at the house one day, even though you see like the mom is pregnant, but like the mom doesn't give birth to the baby. They aborted it, the other baby. I guess that's, that's what, <laughs> that's must have, what, that might have been what happened. I mean, cause it doesn't make, cause like you see her pregnant, then the next scene, the, the baby just shows up in a taxi. And then there's like this whole thing where like, I guess in like some like baby land or heaven or something in the clouds, they like, they sort out the babies and, you know, some babies are normal babies, but then some are, are like too intelligent so they sort them into like a different category where they like dress in suits which is determined by if they're ticklish <laughs> yeah yeah if you're tic- that's right if you're ticklish you're dumb <laughs> is yeah on what they're saying yeah, right he's just a normal baby and then but if not they send you in a suit to work for like a corporation and like it's it's like obviously like convoluted to where it's supposed to be funny and it could like almost work but that's just kind of like the whole movie. Like it almost works, but it's just not very funny, which is the problem. Well, <laughs> it's just yeah, like it, it doesn't no. make sense, and it is it's like absurd humor, but it's not funny absurd humor. It just makes me more confused by the whole like premise of the movie. Well, it's so it's it's so lowbrow, you know. You probably could write some funny jokes, and that that one where they're going through the sorting process. I get I guess the joke they're trying to make is like if you're a humorless. Then you go into management, you know, that's like kind of the joke they're making with the boss baby thing. Mm. Um, yeah. But Adam said already about the target demographic, but like who actually is the target gra- demographic for this movie? It seems like not it's sure. only the parents of, of like little kids. Yeah. Like, I d- it's not a kid's Most movie. of the jokes are like, they make like HR jokes, like where's HR when you need them, you know? And mm-hmm. it's like, what kid's going to get any of this? That's clearly for the parents, but then... I don't know. I got like a bunch of younger cousins. They're older now, but like, man, they hated like baby imagery. You know, they like how to train your dragon and cool stuff. You know, things. Yeah, like, yeah. Something they can look up to. It's not for kids. No, it's literally it's yeah, literally right. for moms. And then they drag their kids to the movie to justify <laughs> to enable them going. <laughs> they just use their <laughs> children as an excuse to yeah. watch a movie about a baby. And they're like, "Oh, this is for my kid." No, as soon as you're old enough to even understand what a movie is, 
you don't relate to babies anymore. You don't like it when someone calls you a baby, right? Like that fucking Nathan Fielder sketch is like, oh, you don't want to be a baby. You better have this toy. You better have the doink it. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be a baby. Like that's 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 the number one concern of children ages two through fucking 13 is not being called a baby, right? Yeah. yeah. They don't want to watch a baby movie. They want to be an adult. It's like uh, yeah. one of those saccharine, like, Facebook mom, like, minion posts as a movie, mm-hmm. you know? It's, like, mm. so corny, and it's just loads <laughs> of, like, baby butts and, like, nappies. Yeah, and, lots of baby like, butts. Yeah. <laughs> just the stuff, like, moms would love. That's it. Yeah, yeah. And the second one has, like, Shawshank Redemption references. It's, like, oh, what Don't get me child's... started on the references, man. Y- yeah. Oh, that's like, my least favorite what part child has seen Shawshank? Let's, let's keep the second one in our pants until we get to it. All right? This is a discussion yeah, about the first film. Yeah, keep keep that in your diapers. Yeah, yeah keep, keep it in your diapers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the references are just like, what kid is supposed to get this humor? Because no kid yeah. has seen these movies. Like, you know, at least like the Toy Story movies, they reference like Star Wars or whatever. Like a kid might have seen Star Wars, or at least it's made for that demographic. It's like, who the fuck... Like what? Like yeah, it's made for adults, really, at the end of the day, which is not... Only moms. Good. And grandmas. Yeah. It's it's and the humor is just like so lazy. And yeah. Grandmas would love this. Yeah. It was hard for me to even get into the premise of it because it makes no sense. The reference stuff, man, like I've gotta say, it has maybe the most annoying bit side character like in any film ever. That that alarm clock Gandalf thing. Oh what my a god. Annoying, like unfunny. Oh, yeah. They just he just keeps saying Lord of the Rings references. <laughs> That's it. That's yeah. the whole thing. Oh my god. Hey, get it? I'm Gandalf. What were they doing with that? That was atrocious, yeah. Fucking eight times. Like Yeah. Until the end of the fucking movie. That's the only joke. That's it. That was atrocious. <laughs> There's no other point. Is it a joke even? Like it's just it's not a substantive. It's a reference. Th- it's literally yeah. just a reference. For mom. Maybe for that one's for dad. <laughs> that might have been the worst part. Oh no, the dad one was the Elvis references. That was for dad. That was for grandpa. Oh, Elvis oh, segment. Oh, that was for oh grandpa yeah, and grandpa. grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> that was for Boz Lerman. Yeah, that part. Yeah, there was an, there was actually an Indiana Jones reference as well in the movie. I forget. Remember that? They're like in that. They've got to <laughs> do the thing Indy does in the Crusade with the oh, yeah, sand. Oh yeah, that part. Yeah. Like oh for, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But Remember like a that? kid's not gonna get that. Yeah, no. there's there's a lot of just no. ancient shit. They they had a reference to Mr. Magoo. You know, that's a that's an old person thing. They had a reference to Julia Child. Yeah. They had a reference to <laughs> the right. mouse trap board game for millennials who are having children right now. Oh, the six million dollar man. They had that sound effect sure. in there. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Lots of references, mm-hmm. no substance, bad jokes, and uh yeah, just uh, th- I I don't see a single thing in this film that kids would like. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like I don't I don't see a single thing in here that it's like, oh yeah, kids would love this. Other than it's just like brain rot and it distracts them for a bit. Yeah, that's why I think yeah. they'd like it. I think because because yeah. kids are pretty dumb, so you could just like put on whatever for them. <laughs> like that, it's that kind of well, movie. The, it's 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 manic. They're, they're yeah, absolutely right. manic, these movies. Like, I don't think any shot lasts longer than like one second. You know, there's always yeah. just something crazy going on. They're doing crazy, yeah. exaggerated faces all the time. There's always motion. There's always crazy colors. Mm-hmm. And I guess that's what is for the, the kid audience, just to be like bamboozled by what they're seeing. It has it has the exact opposite effect on me. The entire movie just bounces off my fucking brain. It's like the reverse synecdoche in New York for me. Like I don't absorb any of it. <laughs> <laughs> but there's like this forced sentimentality with like the brother Hate it. and the, their like relationship. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like, yeah. oh, they actually get to love each other by the end of the movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and know. it gets really dramatic between the second and third act where they hate each other for 10 seconds. That's a yeah. uh, that's on the checklist. So you have to do that. So like the second it hits the hour mark, yeah. Yeah, they've got to fall yeah. out for a little minute. Yeah. Yeah. They miss the plane. Like, I don't like you right now. And then it immediately resolves itself. Yeah. Yeah. The pacing is bad for it. Because, like, the whole movie basically wraps up and then it goes on for another 15 minutes or so with, like, the little epilogue there where the baby goes back to his 
corporation and realizes he you know he loves his brother and he goes back but it's like it's so long we were like, i was watching my brother we're like why is this going on so long <laughs> yeah. the, like the movie's over like they defeated the villain it's like what is this yeah well like the, the the boss baby's motivation is that he wants a corner office with its own nice bathroom yeah golden yep, toilet kids are gonna love that they're gonna really yeah. relate and understand that <laughs> I, yeah. yeah like the it's it's infuriating. It's legitimately infuriating <laughs> that I had to, I, I needed help idea. understanding the fucking plot to this. I was like, why is any of this happening? Like, it just bounces off my fucking brain. Oh, yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It's so not important. But I think the point is that it's so absurd that it's like, it's oh, you're, you're stupid for trying to find logic in it because it's like all absurd humor, but it's not very funny like it doesn't absurd go absurd humor. enough. Exactly. It doesn't go absurd enough yeah, to be like interesting. Yeah. It's just dumb. Yeah. It does be kind. It's yeah. just dumb and not in a way that people people use the excuse like, oh, it's dumb because so kids connect to it. It's not even dumb in a way that kids would connect to it. <laughs> like no one's connecting to it. No. It's just it's the the, no. the plot is just there. It's it's only explained out of obligation. It's not there for any artistic reason for any person in the audience. You know, like. It's literally just, ah, uh, we got to pretend there's a motivation here somewhere. Yeah, because it can be done. Like, if you think about something like Monsters, Inc., right? That's pretty absurdist. But they, they, yeah. they like, set up rules, you know? Like, they turn yeah, laughing or um, beer into a currency, and they have, like, all this fun action. And there's stakes. They present it in a way that, like, kids and adults can, yeah, have stakes. Yeah, exactly. And it has Steve Buscemi as a villain, too. Um, the villain is just <laughs> oh, awful yeah, in yeah. this film. <laughs> Um, yeah, God, it he's, again. <laughs> he's so uninteresting. <laughs> he's like he's like a, he it's, used to be baby, a boss yeah. baby, but he's lactose oh, intolerant, yeah. so he couldn't drink the milk that deages you. So Steve. he's got a chip on his shoulder about that. So he invents a type of puppy that can't age because there's a limited amount of love in the world, and in the pie chart of love, he wants pets to overtake babies, so, so no one has babies anymore. Yeah, and the sorry, sorry, that chart it was like ten percent cats. I thought cats would be like a little, but it was like the same amount yeah. as like I don't know, like snakes or something, like some other thing. <laughs> that was like yeah, no, cats would be a little something. bit more. It would be like at least twenty percent or something. I don't know. It's just a little thing I noticed. The movie uh. would have worked better if instead of babies, it was cats. If the whole if the whole plot is like we gotta stop dogs from being the cute. It's literally the same plot as that movie Cats and Dogs. Remember cats that shit? Versus- <laughs> it's the, it's yeah, the yeah, exact yeah. same plot, that shit. but they replaced yeah. the. The, ba- the cats with babies, which makes the movie worse inherently already. And that's got Tobey Maguire in it, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're right. Yeah, there's a lot that's of similarities here. <laughs> yeah, it's all just linked. It's all just the one thing. But, like, th- this is all bad, right, in and of itself. But, man, the budget on this. $125 oh, yeah. million for this. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> is that more than Spider-Verse? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> In 2017 as well. So like that uh-huh. much now must be like 200 million or but something. But it made half a billion dollars. Sad. <laughs> so it was, that's like no one connected to this. So clearly someone but did. it's like, where did that money go? Like it, it, it uh, I don't yeah, know. Like a couple great. of yeah. like creative scenes, I guess. Um, From the name where, actors like, is where it the, went. The seven-year-old boy, the... Um, he keeps having these, like, he's supposed to have an active imagination, so they kind of change up the art style now and again, make things a bit more extreme. But again, they don't lean into it enough. It's just, like, little vignettes here and there. The majority of it, like, these these chase scenes, like the one in the garden or the one through town, like, I was really looking at the backgrounds. They're the most, like, boring, flat, like, the... They've got no detail. They're totally out of focus. Yeah, it's like those Despicable yeah. Me movies. Like, yeah, they really reused felt like that. assets. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, yeah. And then every imagination scene was like an excuse to have really low polygon, simple texture. Yeah. Like, yeah. Simple like colors. Simple like, colors. Like, yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Like every imagination scene. They're, they're like, we're not going to draw in background characters. Every person in this crowd is going to be a stick figure. It's like, okay. Because it's imagination. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah, like, exactly. Good excuse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. And then the rest of the movie's happening, and it's kind of, like, heavily implied that it is his imagination, even when we're not seeing it through that lens, because, like, you see the chase scene in the the backyard, and then the parents look through the window, and it's like, okay, through their perspective, he's just going, like, half a mile Mm -hmm. a year or whatever, like... He, he's going incredibly slow and just dragging onto the back of it. It's not happening the same way that we're seeing through his perspective. So that's the yeah. heavy implication, mm-hmm. which gets thrown out of the window in the second movie, which I guess we'll talk about in a bit. But like, so that's not 
I don't even know what they were trying to imply or if it matters at all, which I guess it just doesn't and nothing matters and it's fine because they, yeah. they don't care. They tried to frame it as like, it's a story, it's a story older, like Tobey Maguire, Tim is like telling his daughter. So like the logic yeah. of it is like confused and like over the top, I guess. Mm. Like unreliable narrator type thing. Yeah. yeah, that kind of thing. But yeah, it doesn't really like work. <laughs> like it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah, there's just like a little more logic to it. I like, I get the absurd thing, but like just like a little bit more to like ground the movie would have definitely helped. There's something to care me. about. Yeah. 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 For sure. Because it's all, it's all just like nonsense. <laughs> characters suck. Really. Characters suck. There's no real yeah. stakes. Like, who gives a shit if puppies are cuter? Yeah. <laughs> but all, all the joke, <laughs> all the jokes, they're like <laughs> the, the, the extreme sides of like, the spectrum, right? There's one one side where it's like the lowest common denominator, slap jokes, fart jokes, just baby being gross jokes. Mm. And then it's like promotion jokes or like the stocks are crazy today and like a Long Island iced tea joke. And it's like, <laughs> it's so yeah. extreme with that stuff. It's so like, it's like... It's a family movie that's only for adults. It's crazy. You, the people of Long Island do not know how to make an iced tea. Right. Yeah. Not to sound like a dad or whatever. Yeah. There's some humor like that. And even just like the conflict of the movie where it's about like this older brother who hates his younger brother. I'm like, this character's an asshole. Like, like I, when I got a younger brother, I loved him. Like, you know, <laughs> like I enjoyed having a younger brother. Yeah. I don't get why this character is such like an unlikable, like, oh, I hate my brother. Ugh. It's such, it's such like a bad message for kids. It's just like such like a bad thing to show them. Yeah, you know? I, I, I agree because like kids will imitate what they see in media. So when yeah. you're presenting a scenario yeah. like that, some kids will just do it because they think that they have to. I think that people are wildly... Yeah wildly irresponsible with child-centered media and what is shown to children. I think that people are just have no oh, fucking yeah. idea what they're actually doing. <laughs> and it's mostly just adults making things for themselves and using kids in a, as an excuse. Yeah. yeah, that's that's how kids get like weird fetishes like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> fart fetishes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, they all weird, weird shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, people have no idea what's going on. People have no mm -hmm. fucking clue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the child psychology. Yeah, it's like important. Yeah, we're we're all just we're all just kind of doing this experimentally, and then like you know another generation goes by. It's like oh shit, why has everybody got these weird fucking fetishes? Why why are those increasing? Oh, I have no idea. Yeah. Why does everyone have a foot yeah. fetish after watching like Dan Schneider stuff? <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I wish I could like hate the movie, but it, it's 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 such like a meme. Like, not even the movie itself, just, like, the, the poster is a meme. And, like, I would just, like, I don't know. I feel like you just throw this movie on for, like, kids some afternoon. It would be fine. Like, that's, like, the purpose of it, really. Not my but, kid. Yeah. I, I just, like, yeah, just watch it. And, like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It, like, I, I, would, I don't really hate the movie. I just, like, I'm so indifferent to it. I I'm hate like, it. I genuinely hate it. I think it's socially irresponsible, and I want to lock up the people that made it. I think that they should be behind bars. <laughs> Starting with Alec Baldwin. Lock, up. lock them all up. Oh, yeah. Lock these people up. And Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah. Get Jimmy Kimmel in Holy there as well. shit. Oh, I yeah. can't believe I forgot about Jimmy, Jimmy Kimmel. Kimmel. That pissed me off. Yeah. I was hearing his voice act. I was like, who's this voice? I, it's very annoying. And yeah. very Come on, Sam. Yeah. Who is this? Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, super lame. Cast all the worst people in a movie except Toby. Toby's free. He can... He can mm -hmm. He can stay out of prison in my dictatorship. And by Steve Buscemi, he's got some good goodies. Yeah, but he didn't try. Yeah. So he deserves to be in jail for that performance. <laughs> <laughs> it was a smaller sentence. Well, yeah, yeah. We, haven't, uh, we haven't mentioned the director here, Tom McGrath. You know, he's responsible for uh, co-directing all the Madagascar movies. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Megamind he did. Yeah, he did um, Megamind. Those are the this big is, ones. This is some of his worst stuff, though, this... This and the second Yeah, this one. is definitely his worst stuff. Um, obsessed yeah. with his slap jokes, though, that... The Madagascar movies have loads of that, that kind of humor as well. Everyone's just slapping each other all the time. Mm. <laughs> that's the one joke they got. Yeah, yeah. That's that's odd. If it ain't broke. Bad, bad impression. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> bad impressions for kids. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, it's nearly on that level to me where it's so bad and, like, such an insanely terrible idea that it's almost there. But it's just, it's just so boring, man. It, it's yeah. And ugly to look at. <laughs> and like irritating mm -hmm. it feels like those like add tiktoks like strung together like even though it was made in 2017 it's like yeah that's why i think kids would like it 
Because it's just like, it doesn't make any <laughs> yeah. sense. It's just like, oh, it's for kids. Who gives a shit? Well, it, yeah, its main joke is that it's the deep, gruff voice of Alec Baldwin on a baby. And isn't that so yeah. hilarious? That's like the, yeah. the whole thing. He's known for playing adults. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's why yeah. it's funny <laughs> it's an adult voice on a baby he wants to do business yeah, man. he wears a suit mm-hmm. that's funny yeah that's like the whole but it was like a meme though crazy so unrelatable for like a little kid mm-hmm. it, the, yeah, the most unrelatable <laughs> <laughs> like there's the bring the kid to work day bit and it's because the boss baby's parents are working advertising Again, like other concepts, like do you think little seven year olds know what like Mad Men is and the advertising <laughs> space? Like it's just no it's just bizarre. <laughs> do you uh, do you remember near the beginning of the movie? There's like that part where all the other babies show up, and he's like going down the stairs, and then the one baby has like scary green glowing eyes and is like a dead baby zombie for like five seconds, and then he snaps out of it. It was like white eyes and like a dead face or whatever, like. Why? Why? Who's that for? Briefly, yeah, like w- that happened for a little bit, but it was like a genuinely like okay, that's just gonna scare children. Who's that for? Oh yeah, mm. no, I know what you're talking like, about. Well, oh ha ha! It, it was like, scary yeah, just... for a second. Like what? What? Think about think about what you're doing. Think about what this movie <laughs> is going to do to people when they watch it. Like why would you want to just needlessly traumatize a kid like that, even if it's just for like five seconds? Like why would you want to do that? Yeah. Oh, and um, when that whatever that phone showed up, the the one from Skinnamarink, I just kept thinking of Skinnamarink. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) I was like, oh, (laughs) yeah, forever changed. That that's all I had to add to that. Yeah, this is yeah, Yeah. DreamWorks at its worst. You know, like Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Monsters vs. Aliens kind of tier, where it's like it has nothing to it. It's just like a string of references and a bunch of like the lowest common do denominator jokes um they got a mad max fury road reference in there as well um just just like cool yeah nice you referenced that one cool glad Mm -hmm. you did that that really adds to this experience yep kids have seen that movie rated r movie (laughs) yep (laughs) yeah and it's like a a baby like making an espresso martini um like in its first it's like crazy but not in Uh like awesome ways it's just it's so it's just too much it's too much just chill yeah you can still have something that's like stimulating and kind of like adhd and fun like the lego movie the lego movie is fucking awesome it's great you know you don't need something to have like a lot of you know fake sentimentality and like you know you don't need something to have like all these strict rules for the universe you can kind of just be like oh you know like what if what if things functioned like it was you know someone playing with legos or whatever that's fine right Mm -hmm. that's all you need right like the boss baby like i just i i hate how they how they explain things and how it doesn't matter and so it's like okay why did you even explain it and then nothing matters anyway and the consequences don't matter and the characters don't matter and ultimately nothing matters and the movie's boring and it's bad and it's just a lot of baby butts (laughs) <laughs> like for the moms, baby and that's it it's a crazy amount of baby butts well why yeah <laughs> yeah it's yeah. not funny <laughs> like if you took if you took those exact images and some like twitter artist made that exact same thing they'd be like fucking canceled <laughs> like they'd be like why are you drawing <laughs> yeah. them like why yeah. are you fucking posting that shit like people don't want to see that yeah why is, what is that what's in your imagination what are you doing <laughs> like, uh, but, but it's funny it's funny for the moms <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Grandma loves it, yeah. Fine. Yeah. Ah, it's a baby butt. Man. <laughs> well, I, I'm sure you guys love the Hans Zimmer score though, right? He definitely Oh, it was Hans this, Zimmer. Right? <laughs> wow. Holy <laughs> shit. Yeah, it was Hans Zimmer at his best. <laughs> Hans Zimmer does like everything, yeah. He's Just he's like, got such know. a range of quality. I am I've heard yeah. down the grapevine from like people in like music industry and colleges and stuff. Like it's like a, a well known secret, allegedly. I this is I'm not saying this is factually but backed <laughs> up by anything, that it's a well known secret 
that Hans Zimmer just gets like a bunch of his like students to to do a lot of the scores for his shit. His intern, yeah, yeah. So he, <laughs> yeah. He, he, yeah. he runs this business through his academy where like he doesn't really compose <laughs> a lot of the music he's credited mm-hmm. for, and so he's like that would explain a fucking lot, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> it would explain allegedly. A lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That sounds about right. I it would yeah. explain a lot. So. It's like his his understudies to like yeah, do it for him. Yeah, he's got this like this whole fucking thing maybe allegedly. Yeah, why would he waste time with like Boss Baby? He you yeah know, exactly. He composes the stuff he like cares about like Interstellar yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Doing or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So there's okay. So let's 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 think about kind of closer <laughs> towards the ending right now. So they do the whole Men in Black thing without. I mean, it would have been cool if they used the Men in Black things as a reference, but they kind of just did it without directly referencing. Oh, the memory wipe thing. Yeah, they're like, yeah. you will forget about having a baby, which seems kind of morbid. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, and definitely. And for some reason, the babies, like, to the brother, they ask him permission. Yeah, a- they're like, would you like yeah. to forget about the baby? He's like, nah. They're like, okay. So it doesn't really matter. Like, I don't know what the kind of the fucking operation is here. I don't even know why, like, it matters that people don't know that the babies can talk. Like, why this organization is in secrecy. Like, how did it start, right? Because the, the, you're saying the entire point of the organization, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. <laughs> is to combat dogs being cute, but that the dogs being cute <laughs> situation as a problem only started recently. So what was this? Like, it seems like you have a lot of infrastructure here that existed before that was a problem. I don't know how this started. Yeah, like, what are they doing? What? Why does this exist? What are exist? they actually doing? Where is it? <laughs> is it like, is it in VR with the baby soothers? It doesn't really exist? Because it showed before you were born that you were on a real conveyor belt and something? Is there yeah, different they- planes of reality? And yeah, you can also like you can like just close your eyes and your ghost will appear there and like you can like look around without interacting with anything and like no one will see you. That's like a thing yeah. they set up. I don't It's like why? It doesn't make any goddamn sense. No, it doesn't. <sighs> But it's it's all in <laughs> Tim's head. It's all in Toby Maguire's imagination. He's made it up in a story. <laughs> I guess they, they told his daughter. That's why. Yeah. So don't tr- don't try to find logic in it. Yeah. The the tease at the end of the movie was just like ugh. <laughs> well, clearly they were saving all of these threads to explain in the sequel. Obviously, guys. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they were thinking. Yeah. The incredible boss baby. Uh, they probably set up for a trilogy, but the second one bombed, or I don't think it. I think it underperformed. Yeah. I just you know. It's whatever, this movie. I really like that song, Blackbird Singing in the Dead of Night, but now I'm not sure I like it anymore. <laughs> well, yeah. It was really corny in this movie. It was so... It, I I maybe died <laughs> for, for a bit when they played it at the end. Yeah. It's like they, they, kept, they kept playing it. I was like, okay, you know, I like that song. They're, you know, they're kind of butchering it, but whatever. It's just in here. And then the way that they kept reincorporating it to the point where it was like, oh, now this is going to be like some weird fucking bullshit sentimental thing. Like, at the very end of the movie or yeah. like the climax or whatever. Like, oh, I got to get him off the thing, the baby. Or like, I don't even fucking remember how it was used. I was just like... I just yelled, shut up, and I fell on the floor. <laughs> yeah, I wrote in my notes towards that point, just, I can't stay focused on this shit. That's, I was, like, <laughs> so tuned out at that point. Like, I, I couldn't even, like, pay attention. Like, it's just so... There's nothing. It's, it simultaneously wants to have that emotional resonance, but also be completely absurdist, and everything's just a, a stupid yeah. meme, you know? Yeah. It's such, like, a cut-and-paste, like structure too like everything about it's like you know like yeah writers should be paid more except for the writer who wrote this movie <laughs> except for the, whoever wrote this movie because it was like such a lazy hack job yeah this this must have been one of those afternoon jobbies you know like they, yeah they wrote the, like they wrote yeah. wonder after this in an afternoon and we're like cool right who, who cares you know like whatever we exactly got the concept like the boss baby that's all you need just make yeah, it up as just throwing a bunch of dumb jokes just let the animators right. improv and just do wacky poses <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah. So at least there was that. <laughs> one out of ten. Hated it. Cancer. One out of ten. 
Awesome. Yeah, one out of ten from me. Just that wow. smug face they Jeez. always be pulling with the boss baby, that doing that lip thing. Smug little baby, motherfucker. Little bitch. One star. <laughs> <laughs> I give it a two out of five. So I like it more than you. Because, yeah, there's some fun, like, animation. And, yeah, I would throw it on for kids, like, one afternoon, even though there's there's horrible messages in it, but whatever. <laughs> 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 Hopefully they just, like, forget about it. At some like It's Hopefully. just, like, something. Yeah. Like, we can only hope. Waste time. Yeah. I guess uh, just for, like, reference, right, this is 2017, some of the competition with animated movies. Captain Underpants, they released that year, DreamWorks as well. Way better than this. So much better mm. than this. Um, the Emoji Movie, Despicable Me 3, Cars 3, Coco, and the Lego Batman movie. So that's the kind of space we're talking about. It's, it's pretty low out of all those, you know, and there's some shit yeah. in there too. Yeah, yeah. It's probably, yeah, Cars 3 is probably better. Yeah, no doubt. Did you guys see, um, somebody posted this in my subreddit. There's like some test animation footage and it looks like like they got pretty fucking far there was a movie that they were working on that they cancelled called Larrikins L-A-R-R-I-K-I-N-S oh I I saw this the the Australia one right yeah and it was apparently Mm. scrapped in favor of the boss baby and it's like looks better (laughs) like it looks better than the boss baby yeah it wouldn't make boss baby money though I'll tell you that much yeah it it probably would not have made that because apparently this film like just dominates on streaming for whatever reason it's like just always like in the top 10 yeah at least in the uk <laughs> that i was reading it's just like wedged in there a lot of moms searching up the word baby yeah. probably thinking that they'll find content to put on for a baby and then that'll be the first thing that yeah shows up. right that's basically what it's made for it's made for babies who like can't discern like a plot or like any kind of like anything yeah, it's basically the demographic for the movie. Yeah, it's probably it's probably great for Google search results actually. Just yeah, you baby, search yeah. up baby, you know, baby movie. Yeah, look up baby movie. Whereas yeah, larrikins probably wouldn't have you know. Yeah. Super <laughs> obtuse. Honestly, yeah, I'd be I would I would raise this a point <laughs> if this was called the baby movie. <laughs> 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 you know, yeah. like the B movie, the baby <laughs> movie. B movie. I feel like you get more mileage out of, if you started with the title, I think you'd get a better concept if you just started with, okay, we're going to do the baby movie. Like, what do we do from here? It's like the Lego movie, just babies, you know? I feel like you could make something mm-hmm. entertaining yeah. and interesting that's not the boss baby. Yeah, I don't, I don't get it. It's just the whole management business side. That's the craziest part to me, like... Include the spy angle, spies in disguise, mm-hmm. or Cars 2 or whatever. Like, kids can understand that. This mm-hmm. is just, it's like, it's boring. <laughs> I know that's supposed to be the whole joke, but it's just yeah. it's dull. <laughs> it's kind of like a stock market allegory, <laughs> almost. <laughs> yeah. yeah we mentioned like, yeah. stocks, yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's, the, yeah, that's definitely true. It's like, yeah, why, why do kids care about business? It's not like a, it's not compelling. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> so stupid, and they use it's the, so stupid. The, the writing is on the level where, like, the, the line "fart poop duty" is like said early on in the movie, right? And <laughs> oh, they, yeah. they call back to it later on, as if it's like, yeah, this this is the calling card for this movie. People are going to be buying like the the plush, and they're going to be pressing. The it and it's going to be soon. Yeah, the, the <laughs> fart poop duty. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the writing is so bad. It's so contrived. Would you? I feel like that would be something that you would put on a T-shirt for Jar. I feel like that's, that's <laughs> yeah, a Jar-branded yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. Far from yeah. Pity. But that would actually be funny. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Give me $125 million to make that. And yeah, I'll do that. yeah, exactly. And then, yeah, I don't know. Like, what, like when the villain showed up in the movie for the first time, like you're not supposed to know it's the villain, but I'm like, oh, that's the villain. Like, I call it, like, right away. Yeah, they didn't even try to hide it. It's so no. obvious. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, like, you know, Monsters, Inc. does that much better. And um, I don't know. It's like the reincorporation, like, with the handshake. They do, like, a special handshake. I'm like, oh, that's going to come into play at the end of the mm-hmm. movie. They're going to do the hand, And then they do. It's like, ugh. I, I hate stuff like that. When you can, like, see it coming from, like, a mile away. It's so, like, it makes me cringe. Yeah, it's like the formula. It's like the plugins. It's all just, like, automated. It's It's a checklist. Yeah, they definitely wrote this in like a weekend. Yeah, it's like no yeah. effort put in this shit. <laughs> no, but th- these must be the best for them, you know? Like, 
you just you have total freedom to just make to- like complete shit, and it doesn't even matter what you make because it's like y- yeah. you you have your hundred twenty five million in the bag, and you got Alec Baldwin. Who cares? And that's how it feels. Like it's just who yeah. cares? Yeah. Right. It, it, there's something liberating about that. That's <laughs> 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 why I like it more than you guys. <laughs> hmm. I like the I like the total nonsense of it. Yeah, because at least it's like. Yeah, like toward the end, it starts getting like more into the plot again. It got boring again, but yeah, it's it's, it's just so fucking crazy that I'm like, I don't know, I, I wouldn't mind showing this to like some kid. I would never show this to anybody as long as they were my kid, <laughs> 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 not a random kid, not like a Ezra Miller kidnapping children. When I am dictator, this movie is becoming <laughs> one of the burned books. <laughs> the first yeah. to go. It's gonna be last media. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Big pile of Boss Baby Blu-rays burning. That was a lot of that was a lot of alliteration right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> better joke than anything in the fucking film. Like, that <laughs> yeah, I write a song about Boss Baby burning. <laughs> boss Baby burning in the dead of night. Yeah. <laughs> <Blackboard>. Please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I was just referencing stuff now. <laughs> Like like Boss Baby. <laughs> uh, there's a second movie. Thank Christ we watched the sequel. And Boss Baby Back in Business, right? Is that what it's called? Sorry, yeah. The family Business. Family Business, I think you'll find. <laughs> oh, fam- oh, okay. Whatever. <laughs> a little more alliteration. Yeah, uh, yeah. There's a sequel for some fucking reason. Because it made money. Well, it, added, it actually added a lot to the movie. It added a lot of context to uh, the first film. And uh, it's uh, it's James Marston this time, right? Instead of Tobey Maguire. Yeah. Because <laughs> why not? I thought it was Paul Rudd at first. He sounds like his voice is so similar to <laughs> it. It, it could like, have been. It might as well have been Paul yeah. Rudd. It could have been fucking anybody. Yeah. Yeah, why not? And they like... They're, they're, so like at the end of the first movie, they become adults. Like that's like the, a big thing about the end of the first movie. They're like adults now and they have their own kids. So it's like, all right, how are they going to write it? So that they're babies again, or they do like a flashback or something. But in this movie, they just like drink the baby formula from the first movie, and it like slowly deages them. So like Tim, because I was thinking like, okay, so if they both drink the formula, they, they'd both become babies, right? And that could have been like maybe sort of interesting mm. if they were both babies. But like they they slowly deage like as they drink it. So Tim is the same age as he is in the first movie and the boss baby's you know baby like by the time they're drinking yeah, the formula it's, it's, it is funny that they just kept the yeah. same character model <laughs> yeah because yeah they, then they would have to make a new character model this movie has a lower budget than the first one it's 80 million that's because they reuse all the same shit it's like the same house like the first 40 yeah minutes. it does it looks much better though than the original era. Somehow, yeah, yeah it does but it's much all the better. same like assets like you know it's like the you know it's all the same character models and the character stuff and i don't know it, yeah it's even the same story pretty much like but to me this is basically what the first one should have been but it's a bit more appropriate to its audience, you know? Really? You like this this one more? I I think this one's, like, significantly better. Really? Yeah. Which isn't saying a lot, but... I I thought this one was worse. (laughs) Really? I thought this one was actually much worse. I thought this one was boring. This one was actually fucking painful. This one was boring as fuck to me. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. uh, This one at least had a few things that kind of kept me a bit more interested, right? Like, and at, at first, at least... Like I mentioned in the first movie, um, the whole business angle and them going to this like advertising firm and all this stuff kids would not understand. At least most of this movie is like set in a school, you know? And it's like a framing that like little kids could at least relate to and understand. <laughs> at the very least. So this it's, it's still pretty basement basement level. Yeah. But. but it's like a it's like a robot school. It's like a robot futuristic school. <laughs> yeah. It's like controlled by like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but I guess you're right. And you got what the Jeff Goldblum villain, um, who's kind of the same concept as the villain from the first movie, except he turns out to actually be a baby. Um I kind of enjoyed that villain as far as how he's presented. Um he's like in a mech suit for some reason um <laughs> uh he's just animated in a way more interesting way uh when he's when they're in like the classroom and he's on this it's this weird little like robot 
TV screen that's going around and it's like missing out frames and it's all, I don't know, it's at least something, you know, I'm con- contrasting this to the first movie, right? Like it's, it's still garbage. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was at least something. I didn't mind that. I, I thought his performance was fine, annoying, like annoyingly written, um, but at least wasn't as grating as some of the stuff in that first movie. Um, it, the reference stuff at, f- at first, like for the first 40 minutes or so, I was like, man, they've really... They, it was even kind of self-deprecating. They like kind of make fun of the first movie a little bit. Um, when his daughter is talk, he's talking to his daughter about the story of the first movie, and he's like, "At least the jokes were good, right?" And she's like, "Nah." So yeah, I don't know how intentional that was or whatnot. Yeah, but, I don't you know. know. It seemed it, it seemed like they actually kind of at least made a movie appropriate for his audience here for like a fraction of the first one's budget. Um, and yeah, the reference stuff was way toned down. They still. I was, I was like in a ball on the floor when they pulled out that Gandalf character again. Um, but <laughs> it, it wasn't as annoying. Um, oh, I thought he was still. I thought he was worse in this one. I guess he's not in it as much. But yeah, I don't um, know. I, I just can't. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't understand. <laughs> oh, the other uh, the other self deprecating joke as well. With the uh, they make fun of DreamWorks a little bit with the the you know the spirit horse movie was that one guy in the theater that was a weird reference (laughs) fucking stallion of the zimmerin (laughs) yeah it's like weirdly self-deprecating yeah he's wearing 3d glasses wasn't expecting that one (laughs) yeah yeah that's that's actually what this so it bombed so there's one guy in the theater all right that's actually that's not bad yeah like that's a better joke than anything in that first movie you know (laughs) yeah uh, like i said the shawshank references and whatever i I don't know like is a kid supposed to have seen that movie (laughs) there's you know there's there's stuff like that in there that just kind of threw me off and yeah it was just so fucking boring it's kind of interesting because because hans zimmer scored this one as well but the music was very different. A lot of the references in this film were in the music, and they were like more yeah, subtle. like they play the music from Shawshank. Yeah, yeah. There was like a Great Escape kazoo kind of like similar thing, and yeah, yeah. There was another. I forget the other one. I wrote it in my notes, but I can't find it right now. I'll bring it up later. I don't know. It is longer than the first one. <laughs> oh wait, no. Yeah, here we here we are. They literally they did a soundtrack of. They did a parody of the Brazil soundtrack. That I liked that. I was oh, like, did they? Okay, yeah, what they scene? did. When they're first introducing themselves into like the into the like office environment and everybody's kind of like running around, it's like a it's like a it's a parody of Brazil. I even noticed oh. that. It's very subtle. It's, yeah, I didn't even know. I didn't twig that because it's in the soundtrack and it's not like a like ooh they're doing the same notes, but they're doing they're they're playing. It's the same instrumentation and the same tone. So it's like, it's really, the, the references in the soundtrack are really only noticeable for like music people, <laughs> which I kind of liked. Yeah. It, it, was a, it was more subtle in terms of how they were doing the references. So that was interesting to me. Yeah. yeah that's crazy. Um, some of the like imagination scenes are a bit better too. There's like a trial scene, kind of like the wall. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm, gr- I'm like grasping at straws here, like trying to pray because it's still it yeah, is, yeah. It's the same. It's the same foundation they're building on. It's just like, a, like a tiniest bit more stable <laughs> than the first one, uh, to me mm-hmm. at least. Like the chase scene through the city, much better than any of the ones from the first movie. Um, with like the callbacks to the, all the characters from that first movie, they they really like treated it as if like yeah, we, we really want to see all those elements come back in some way. You got to see. The Gandalf toy. You got to see the the classic uh, triplets, you know, and all the, all the guys you remember from that first movie. Um, yeah, yeah. I I just thought the movie was so boring and like redundant. Like you know, you have that first movie, fine. Like it, it didn't need any more elaboration. Like they, like there's just nothing for me you can do with the concept past like the first <laughs> movie, and they just yeah. like let's. Let's see, like, what we can, like, throw together. So, like, throw in the school and... I don't know. I felt like just, like, another episode of, like, a TV show where you have, like, all the same characters and just throw them in a new scenario and... Yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah, I I get what you're saying about the school, like, that being more relatable to a kid. Like, that's a great point, I think. 
But yeah, I was just so, you know, I, I, I'm not really a kid, so I don't really care. <laughs> and yeah, it was like, it's like the whole movie was so redundant to me and just not funny and fucking horrible, which is like what the first one is. But there was something particularly about this one. Both movies are absolutely horrible, but I feel like if if I were to judge <laughs> this in terms of what it's trying to do, if it's trying to be like a kid's movie, I felt like this one was a bit more like stimulating in terms of like what's happening and like the different sets and like there was a weird fucking like miniature horse that just showed up and left and came back <laughs> like for some scenes and like it's like an ongoing uh, joke yeah yeah and like there was there i don't think there was significantly less maybe not any uh baby butt in this film i found myself being less like disgusted really. at what they were yeah. showing i found myself <laughs> being less like why would you show that like i was less actively pissed off <laughs> sure it was yeah. boring um i also like amy sedaris yeah. i like amy sedaris i'm glad to see her do more things yeah it's the other boss baby yeah she's yeah. in like mandalorian too yeah bojack yeah she was she uh, like you know she was fine um I think, like, maybe the first one had a little, like, the conflict was a little more, like, apparent. Like, the whole brother conflict. And this movie, yeah. they just get along. But who gives a shit about so that? So, there's not really, like, any kind of, like, <laughs> driving force to, like, the plot for most of the movie until, like, they introduce the villain, like, later on. But Jeff. a lot of the movie just felt, like, aimless to me. It was just, like, going yeah, along. it's way too long. It is incredibly yeah. boring. Um, but that, yeah. when the villain came in was when I was kind of more engaged, to be honest. Um, yeah, yeah. I kind of, yeah, sure. And the, you know, his daughter character there, I wasn't too engaged in her story either. I just felt like it was so, like, oh, we gotta go to the, you know, she's gotta do the singing pageant, and she's gotta sing this, the big song, and whatever. I was not really engaged in any of that. And it got kind of like super like weird and disturbing in that one part where she like she <laughs> si she she finishes her song and the whole audience is just like quiet. It's just like dead silent and she's like breathing heavily like looking at all these people like in in the <laughs> shadows. <laughs> and it's like this really uncomfortable moment. I was like, "Holy shit." This is like a fucking like Lynch film all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's so bizarre <laughs> that scene. It was also kind of just uncomfortable the whole like uh, the de aging milk shit, you know? Like where he's. Yeah. I, I thought they were going to almost go for some weird um, Freudian uh, Back to the Future thing where he's like. <laughs> His dad <laughs> is like de-aged talking to his mom and like having all these weird yeah. scenes and there's a scene later in the movie where she's like, oh my God, I told him so much stuff and it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> and the narration yeah. at the end like digs at it as well. Like, that was weird. <laughs> it's just, it's <laughs> yeah. just, 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 just the whole idea, the whole premise. Yeah. That <laughs> didn't need yeah. iterating. Um, but at least this yeah. to me was like them kind of correcting uh, some of the stuff that giving like the slightest little bit more depth you know like at least the villain here he, you know he's got a little bit of an arc it's like wrapped up with a bow um he like goes back to his parents at the end he's got that uh i can remember at least some character traits he's like always eating sugar in every scene like a death note or something mm -hmm. yeah but you know still irritating alex is really he's really selling me on this movie <laughs> <laughs> i like it uh no i don't i don't like it any better but you know i just like I just found it completely boring, whereas the first one was just, like, nonsense, and I, I could get along with just nonsense, as opposed to, like, actually trying to make me care <laughs> about, like, <laughs> the, these, like, this boss baby concept and, like, these characters, and it's, it's, I've just, you know, the first movie did it all, it didn't really need a sequel, and it just felt so pointless to me, and it was just <laughs> so boring, yeah. It did do it all. Yeah. It did like nothing. It it's it was attempting to do nothing and it did that really well. <laughs> you know, it was really like I felt I felt watching this movie, it was like a breath of fresh air in the first like at least ten minutes just because Alec Baldwin wasn't in it and it was just like Amy Sedaris and <laughs> the other characters. I was like, Oh, okay, like fuck let's yeah. not let's not put Alec Baldwin in the movie at all. That'd be nice. Of course he comes back and so I was like, Okay, whatever. That's the hook. <laughs> yeah. I was I was disappointed in that. And then I got more disappointed as it started going towards the end because there were just weird fucking like I don't know if you guys caught this or not, but Jeff Goldblum when he was like trying to scream in the final part of the film, he was like <laughs> Yeah, ah, I didn't notice it. Uh, like it's held back. 
Like, are you just a shit actor and we've just liked you because we like the, the, that you play the same character every he time? Just, like, he just doesn't care. I just, yeah, he just doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah. Uh. You, don't even, you don't even know how to scream? You're holding back your performance. Come on. You can't even scream. Uh, uh. But, the, but, I, but that's not something I, I didn't mention in the first movie. Like, there's some notably bad voice acting. Whoever yeah. does the Gandalf toy just awful like little bit mm. parts on tv and like up. extras they all are noticeably bad performances like really bad um mm -hmm. and yeah jeff goldblum he's not great but whatever i mean yeah he's jeff goldblum he's the boss baby yeah he's just <laughs> i'd rather hear that than i guess i don't know Alec Baldwin more or true I don't know, Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, yeah i i felt like people wanted to see the boss baby though you know and, and there's no boss baby in this movie till like 25 minutes into the movie like like it takes so long to get to the boss baby you got and the girl like, boss baby I, I get you guys hate the boss baby but I some people love the boss baby <laughs> yeah well. yeah <laughs> there's there's a couple there's a couple issues I had with this film that are a little uh, <laughs> a little me but uh we have the there so the Jeff Goldblum he's like on a TV screen that's like going around the classroom or whatever and it took a while for me to figure out like what the actual implication was with what they were showing visually because it was like oh okay it's it's like kind of got some glitch effects like a weirdly low frame rate like it's stuttering like it's struggling to to display the feed or something but the background image mm -hmm. behind him in the same within the same TV frame was not glitching at the same times. And it was, it didn't have the same frame rate. It had like a smooth, like a smooth frame rate the entire time while he was just glitching in the foreground. And I was like, well, what's the implication here? Like it was, it didn't make any sense. Like <laughs> you should glitch the background with the yeah. foreground. Like the two layers were separated. It did, didn't have a cohesive effect. That was annoying to me. I really hated the, uh, when, when they were trying to explain like, Oh yeah, you know you know that saying "infinite monkeys on a typewriter." Well, we have a a factory mm -hmm. of babies making apps. It's like, well, that's not infinity. You don't have infinite babies doing it, and you don't have infinite time. You fucking more like this is a contained environment taking place on planet Earth with a con with a contained amount of time. That's not how this shit works. <laughs> you don't even understand what you're saying. You don't even understand what you're referencing. And so, yeah, that was annoying. Yeah, yeah. But what yeah, can they even yeah. do? Like, what motivation could, like, baby characters possibly have? <laughs> like, the, the, they're stunlocked by their own concept. Like, what can they even do? <laughs> Should have been cats. Right, that's why... There's just no reason to, like, to elaborate it. Like, just make something fucking yeah, stupid. Yeah, because well, the, the villain's motivation is that he was too smart for his parents, and he's convinced because, the I guess, the what, the plasticity of a baby's brain is, like smarter is like his logic i guess uh. so he's got like a bunch of babies <laughs> working for him making apps and the apps like hypnotize adults yeah because he only wants to control the world that's his thing yeah he wants to that's the message of the movie get off the your app. phones kids get phones off are your bad. phones and live in the real world yeah which i guess is could be a good message for kids but yeah it's They're just probably like watching so... it on a phone on an ipad yeah yeah Definitely. i get mean real. that is kind of contradictory yeah <laughs> it's like a fight club it's like against like Hollywood, and like <laughs> whatever. But it's like a Hollywood movie. Mm -hmm. That that Wizzy guy, his name is James McGrath, who plays him. I wonder if he's like related to the oh, it's probably like his brother or something. Yeah, yeah, something like that. That's that's like what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, another Tom McGrath masterpiece. This one. Yeah, this this one's really bad for me. I don't know. I just thought this was it fucking is very like, bad. painful. <laughs> fucking yeah. painful, this one. Oh, my God. Well, it's like, for me, it was a double bill, like, feature sit-down, like, three-hour, well, four-hour Boss Baby marathon. So, for me, this oh, was nice. like, it felt newer, um, even with that lower budget. There are only a couple of times I was noticing that, that motion blur, interpretive frame thing. A lot of the cheaper animated movies do a lot of... Uh, illumination mm -hmm. movies do um i yeah. guess they're under the same banner now so they're probably sharing <laughs> animation tricks and uh, tips so i don't know but yeah i thought it was way better as visually compared to that first movie yeah uh, that i could even see even the, though they reuse a lot of the same stuff like the character models or whatever it did yeah 
Yeah. The like yeah. the rendering. And like the jokes, yeah, they're garbage, right? But I just <laughs> it, it, it it was better to me. Like it, it wasn't doing the it didn't feel as like Facebook mommy. I mean it still definitely did, but like not to the same degree where it's like that's all it is in the first movie there's like nothing i can really yeah this felt to. a bit more bland somehow you know yeah it had like a bit of a broader appeal it felt a bit more like just a bad kids movie instead of like an exceptionally yeah. disturbing <laughs> <laughs> immoral yeah <laughs> piece of crap yeah. yeah all right i could concede a little it's got like a musical number and stuff like that that was weird like oh oh i hated that with the girl singing yeah yeah it's awful. yeah i hated that um, that was again, terrible at least that's like a, <laughs> that's something original i can point to you know whereas like it's just like a string of references to other movies in that in that first one you know whereas at least that's, that's something they, they, they wrote a song you know i, I can give them that <laughs> it's not a good song but they did do that <laughs> yeah it just wasn't a good song it felt like more work was put in <laughs> yeah maybe <laughs> I I can definitely see your point. And with the, the yeah. man, that Gandalf character, like in in that first movie, he is just from the the word go, it's just references to Lord of the Rings, and like that they're weirdly restrained with him in the second one until they just had to do it. Like they just had to throw out the "you shall not pass" thing. It's like <sighs> I don't e- I didn't even remember them doing it in this movie, which is kind of funny. I think it was. Just- checked out yeah because <laughs> no, it's like they were holding it it's like the one trap card like <laughs> they're waiting it's the ultimate gag at the end when they're all the adults are zombies and that's another they just bringing back all these things jimmy kimmel comes back for that last little well, it's old jimmy kimmel this time yeah yeah he's a grandpa grandpa jimmy kimmel there was less jimmy kimmel in this film and less alec baldwin i think <laughs> i think i know why I yeah there definitely more. yeah <laughs> there was less alec baldwin mm-hmm be like, I feel like people wanted to see the boss baby. Bring on the boss baby. Yeah. I want more <laughs> boss baby. I was like, where's the boss baby? So I can I hate him. But Where's the baby? There was a steroid joke. I noted that down. You know, mm-hmm. when they're drinking the de-aging milk at the beginning. And I had a, uh, Alec Baldwin's like, I think some guys at my gym take this. He added blah, blah. Is that the uh, joke? Yeah. Yeah, that was a, that's that was a good a one. It's yeah. a good one. Yeah. Woo. It was, it was at least some humor sort of that funny. wasn't like business humor, you know? Like, yeah, <laughs> or references to movies, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, you guys really sold me on this. Uh, if we're going to get into ratings. <laughs> 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 yes. <laughs> yeah, um, I get I get what you guys are saying to me. There's just I, I could not get over the fact that I was watching a boss baby two the whole time <laughs> and I was just like, Yeah, fuck this movie. This is a <laughs> I I give it a what one and a half out of five. So a half star lower than the first one. And I, I think I prefer the first one, actually, to this. Okay. It's just shorter and it's just it's fucking nonsense. Like <laughs> I could put that on. I guess I could put this one on for kids. Like, kids will watch anything, really. It's just like, just show them fucking anything. I guess yeah. both of these are Whereas fine movies for that, kids. That, that, uh, that fuck you feeling you got from this one, I got from the first one, you know? So it was like yeah. improvement from the shit. Um, but it's still shit. They're both know? definitely bad. Yeah. We're really like grasping, a, like, we're yeah. splitting hairs here. Yeah. <laughs> definitely. Um, yeah. But I don't know. Like, I still think. There might be worse DreamWorks than this. Uh, Home, that's a particularly bad one. Never saw Big it. Bang I've Theory never seen and, that. Uh, Rihanna, yeah. that one. That one's like a. That's like why I recommended these because like we did, we've done the DreamWorks movies before. I figure these are like some yeah, of the worst. Yeah, like uh, Shark Tale is probably worse. B movie might be worse. Um, <laughs> yeah, oh, B movie. Eh. <laughs> I think uh, I, I think I prefer B movie to these. Yeah, I don't know. This is. Uh, a, a very <laughs> low two star <laughs> four out of ten um, so you loved it yeah <laughs> it sounds like i loved it yeah 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 <laughs> i this this movie feels these two films feel weird in the dreamworks catalog because for the longest time and i think i've been corrected about this an infinite amount of times and i just keep forgetting i would just assume this was like a sony animation movie and not dreamworks like it doesn't feel yeah. like a dreamworks movie in terms of like what what they're presenting conceptually and then just how cheap the animation looks and like jesus it really doesn't like they were making other shit around the same time period that was not like this horrendous so it's just 
confusing. Well, Kung Fu Panda is 2008. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boss Baby, yeah. the first one, is 2017. Yeah, House of Dragon, 2010. Those are, those are much better. It feels yeah. like a new animation studio trying to compete, not like an established one that had already made like several films, you know, trilogies, like How to Train Your Dragon and shit, you know, like... Fuck, it's so, it feels so weird in their catalog that I just keep forgetting it's actually a part of it, which just uh, get rid of it, dispose of it, you know, get fucking burned. <laughs> Erase it. Yeah. yeah. The fact that they try to make it, a, make it like a franchise is like insulting to me. <laughs> it was successful enough that they yeah. had to, I guess. Yeah. What was fucking crazy about this is the first movie got nominated for an Oscar for best animated feature because they just love just throwing in random like whatever was popular that year sort of thing and i think that the reason that they did original songs in the next in the the sequel was because they were probably writing that high and just being like well we were nominated for a fucking oscar for the first one let's throw we might get some original song nominations like if we just do a bullshit out of song like there's tons of movies that do that right so why not? <laughs> that that seems to be a, <laughs> that's a layer, an that's explanation me here for me. That. Yeah, it's gonna nominate Boss Baby. <laughs> it's it was literally nominated for an Oscar. <laughs> yeah, as it deserved to be. <laughs> yeah, I'm giving this one a two out of ten. It was refreshing. <laughs> it's a refreshing <laughs> breath of fr- fresh air, and um, not good. It was really bad. Two out of ten. <laughs> yeah, yeah, can't stand it. Was it. Less cringe than the first one. <laughs> But still pretty fucking cringe, yeah. It's still really bad. It's just insulting. It's insulting that a Boss Baby 2 even exists. <laughs> it's insulting that a Boss Baby 1 exists, let's be real. <laughs> yeah, but at least you could go like, all right, it was a mistake. You know, they made their money. Like, okay, I get it. You know, Boss it Baby. It is crazy to like double yeah. down, but, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so then they just, they made a second one and it like, I don't know. It is, it is insulting. Playtime is okay. over. Yeah, playtime is over. That's right. In June 2021, during a Q&A with Alec Baldwin and Amy Sedaris, a third Boss Baby film was announced to be in early development. But <laughs> his murder <laughs> or manslaughter or whatever we're going to call it happened Fuck. in October. So that was after that. So who knows? I couldn't get that out of my mind when watching this. Like, man, that's an insane story. Yeah. Huh. A mob, mob Boss Baby. <laughs> this industry is fucked, man. <laughs> he should have. He should have served some time for that. Uh, I don't know the, the exact details. Wasn't it like the armorer like messed up or something on set and like there were unsafe like, blank? conditions that he was responsible for as producer. There were a lot of things that. Oh, was he producing it as well? He was also producer. Mm, he wasn't that, just that the person that pulled the I trigger. I wasn't sure if he was just acting. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm, yeah. That that does that complicate. They were like they were using the same gun for like real live ammunition for target practice in between like shoots for no reason wow they're like just a lot of okay, just insane shit that just should not have happened crazy. and they're kind of like yeah well you're famous and it was an accident so wow. okay <laughs> he should have gotten like at least a slap on the wrist for the <laughs> the murder manslaughter or whatever yeah as producer on the film and the unsafe scenarios that led to that death yeah yeah, definitely. He was responsible in some degree. But yeah, what a crazy situation. Whatever. Uh, question time. Yeah, let's do some questions from the Southern Cast community. Head over to the suggestion thread on the subreddit if you want to leave questions for future episodes, just like Creationary did. Recent Disney slash Pixar movies like Elemental, Lightyear, and Strange World have flopped, while movies like Spider-Verse, Puss in Boots, and Mario have done well at the box office. Do you think this will cause Disney slash Pixar to change their approach to movies? No, they'll just make another Toy Story. Yeah. I think it's already confirmed, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Isn't that what they thought with, like, indie? I don't know. Toy Story people will fucking watch, though. Toy Story, it doesn't even matter yeah. what it is. People will just continue watching Toy Story. That's a that's one that they've got in the bank. As long as it's not Lightyear, then yeah, it has to say Toy Story. It has to be like a Toy Story movie. Yeah, I'm yeah. surprised they didn't call it a Toy Story story, Lightyear, you know, or something. Um, yeah, that movie's a fucking mess. Was Lightyear a COVID one? Is that I'm kind of surprised that one didn't. No, do better. slightly after. No, because you you can't really argue it with that one because that was like after you know No Way Home, which was a huge hit. 
Yeah, you're right. You can't really, and like it's around the same time as Top Gun. Well, think about it this way also. Like the trailer for Lightyear and the marketing for it, they're like presenting it as this weird, dramatic, serious, like space adventure thing. And it's like, okay, even if you like Buzz Lightyear, A, not the same voice actor. B, yeah. no mm-hmm. dynamic between him and Woody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. C, like it's supposed to be like a show within the fake universe already. And like, yeah, it's, it's, a, a it's not the right yeah. tone. Like, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't yeah. even like the cool cartoon from the nineties. Yeah, if the, with them marketing the film, a- anything that anyone would like about Buzz Lightyear, they wouldn't get in that film anyway. So it's no surprise nobody fucking watched it. Yeah. I suppose I had no word of mouth. Also, it went woke and two people kissed him. <laughs> yeah, that too. But it just wasn't a good movie either. Um, yeah, that was shockingly bad. Yeah, I mean, the, the Kraken movie bombed from DreamWorks. But that was them trying to make like a Disney movie. Or at least satirize it, maybe. Like with Ariel. And Ariel. Yeah, it didn't have enough babies farting in it. I think yeah. That was <laughs> didn't have enough baby butts. That was the... Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> the issue with that, yeah. Mm-hmm. DreamWorks has always been like the lowbrow one, and now they're making better stuff like that Puss in Boots movie and, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, How to Train Your Dragon and all this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, seeing as we're kind of on this, Humble Wind says, a big reason why recent Pixar films have flopped is due to the fact they actually pay their animators relatively fair amounts of money. Compare this to Spider-Verse, which apparently had awful working conditions. Is it worth it that better movies like Spider-Verse and Puss in Boots are being successful even though they treat their work as poorly, while more generic Pixar movies are not being successful due to the fact that they actually financially support the people who do the heavy lifting? What do you think of this? Yeah, that's true. That's probably why Elemental costs so much. I don't think you have to choose one or the other. I think you can have a good movie and pay your animators. <laughs> I, I don't think there's any reason why you can't have a good movie and pay yeah. your animators at the same time. But that's why like Elemental costs so much. That's why all these movies cost so much now because they're paying the an- they're paying everybody more. Like it's a little more yeah. balanced and fair. <laughs> um, but it, it it makes it hard to make money. You know. Yeah, I mean, if it's fucking unsustainable then maybe think about what you're creating. Like, you you can't really, like, yeah. You can't really take a risk as much if you're, like, spending, you know, $300 million on a movie. But, yeah, I don't know. Well, like, you know, Spider-Verse, right, they could have made the same movie and just paid their animators more and it it would have made yeah. money like you know because it made that that made 500 yeah, million take, take the budget of craven the hunter <laughs> and uh different yeah. it between the animators and just yeah use your money a bit smarter <laughs> yeah but that is true yeah i i want animators to be treated right they're very uh, they, i mean they should unionize unionize well they were unionized when they were like 2D animators, but now they're not considered animators, they're considered visual effects artists, so they're not uni- yeah, unionized. Yeah, exactly. Which explains yeah. why the trend went in this direction, really, in that cynical yeah. way. Mm, but right. what Disney used uh-huh. to do, like, so the budget of the original Lion King is like 45 million. Like, we adjust that for inflation or whatever, it's probably still going to be under, like, 100 million, right? So, I'm assuming, like, even with them being, like, uni- unionized, which is my understanding of that at the time, I hope I'm not spreading information, like, that budget was still lower. Is it simply just the method of animation that is causing this? Like, or what's what's changed? Like, what? why are, why are the budgets so high? Like, yeah. are, are Pixar animators making that much more than all of the supposedly unionized animators that worked on the Lion King and all these other projects or is it the runtime like what is the runtime of Elemental let's see because the Lion King was 90 minutes Elemental only 11 minutes longer than that something that really sticks out when you look at like Disney Renaissance films I rewatched The Little Mermaid before you know watching the remake and it's a it's a really short movie hour 23 minutes like less than an Mm -hmm. hour and a half I wouldn't mind you know if it if it helps make these projects more sustainable and more reasonable to create and make money off of. I wouldn't mind shorter movies. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with a shorter no, movie. Just I tighten up either. the script. Yeah. You know? I always champion short movies. Yeah. Tighten up the script. Absolutely. But I don't think Elemental was that long. I think it was like an hour 40. Yeah, or it's something. an hour 40. But yeah. I was going to say there should be an editor's strike at this point because these movies are too fucking long. Mm-hmm. No more editing. Yeah. I think. 
the, you know, the entertainment <laughs> industry has a just a lot of issues, huh? A lot of uh, yeah. just numbers that don't make sense. I was like, where where is this all being funneled? Like, what what is actually happening? <laughs> like, yeah. where is this going? <laughs> it, it just doesn't make sense. Through a three hundred million dollar Indiana Jones movie, it's, it's like what what is going on? Why did the Boss Baby cost one hundred twenty five million? There's probably a lot of money laundering. Would be surprised, no yeah. doubt. <laughs> it's probably it's probably a lot of shady shit going on. Probably a lot of expenses yeah. that aren't really being spent on the movie or some shit. Mm-hmm. This one's going to management. A lot of money going to producers. Yeah. yeah, a lot of money going to producers. Right, which I wouldn't be surprised. Going to all the Boss Babies in the building. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Limo trips. Uh huh. Yeah. Do we want to talk about the writer strike stuff? Because there's kind of some interesting stuff that's been happening. Yeah, you sure. seen that video of Ron Perlman yeah. basically making direct threats to Bob Iger. <laughs> that, that's pretty insane. <laughs> I haven't seen it, no. But I saw like the story. <laughs> I it was on our Reddit. I haven't watched it, but what does he say? I've seen He's like, like the... well, so he essentially says he he makes like a little Instagram or whatever video of him talking to the camera. He's really serious and stern and like kind of fucking scary. And he's like, listen. Well, yeah, Ron Perlman's scary. Yeah, and so he's, he's talking about, he's like, so be. without naming him, there's somebody that we know that's making like $27 million, uh, $270 million a, a year off of creating nothing. And you thought that our demands were unreasonable and you think that people should lose their houses? Because literally, like Bob Iger, I think it was like in a billionaire's meeting or something when he said this, he's like, oh yeah, their demands are unreasonable. So our plan is to just wait until they, <laughs> until they have to come crawling back to us because they can't pay their rent. Oh or whatever God. like he was literally just saying out loud like oh yeah that's our plan and so ron perlman is like you think people should lose their houses there's plenty of ways to lose a house and we know where you live <laughs> it was like oh <laughs> like, that's like you have full sons of anarchy yeah <laughs> holy shit i have a feeling like, he might get blacklisted at some point i don't i don't fucking know how many strings disney can pull to blacklist him from everything maybe he'll only be showing up yeah. in like indie projects from now on i i don't fucking know but Jesus, I'm sure that, it'll be fun. he was kind of scary. And then I, th- I think Sean Gunn made like a more palatable, yeah. less controversial video on on the subject, and he was essentially just saying like, okay, the the average CEO page fifty, uh, sorry, the average CEO wage fifty years ago was forty, like thirty thirty or forty times what their lowest paid worker made. Now it's like four hundred. There's something wrong with that. And it's like, yeah, I agree. Like, yeah. you know, there's there's a lot of people looking at the situation and being like, oh, what? Fucking writers, a lot of them get overpaid anyway. Or actors, like, they're all rich anyway. It's like, this isn't just for the top people making money in Hollywood. This is, e- e- even if, let's say, every single writer and actor was doing fine and they weren't in any kind of financial crisis and there wasn't like huge inflation and rent crises especially happening in like Los mm-hmm. Angeles and shit if let's say if let's say every fucking actor and writer that this affected was entirely well off i would still agree with them because the people hogging all the fucking wealth are just the people that own the properties and it shouldn't be rigged to this extensive of a degree yeah. like yeah the yeah. pay disparity is ridiculous. There, it, it should be more reasonable. Like the Overton yeah. window has shifted so far that what we accept as normal is not fucking normal. It's not fucking normal. Yeah. This is extreme no. and we yeah. should have been it complaining have about it way. and yeah. doing something no. about it fucking 50 years ago when it started happening. Like, holy shit, this is really mm-hmm. late stage shit that we're talking about. This is not normal and it shouldn't be normal. Yeah, the pay disparity is way too much, yeah. It's ridiculous. And, you know, I can agree that, like, you know, an assistant editor is not as important of a job as an editor. They have more creative input in the movie, so they should be paid more, but not by that much. It shouldn't be, like, yeah, 40, 400 times, <laughs> like, you know, what a what an assistant editor makes or what, you know, like an animator makes, like one animator yeah. working on the movie. It's not the same as, like, a creative director or, you know, one of those jobs, but, you know. There needs to be a little less of a disparity, for sure. I mean, it's not even... Like, I feel like most people would agree with that. There are, like, residual problems as well, right? Like, um, yeah, I think I saw something being shared of one of the Orange's The New Black uh, actors, like, sharing their residual paycheck, and it's, like, $20 or something insane. Yeah, Um, that's what's insane about it, is, like, especially because of streaming. That's why they're protesting, is because, you know, the, the contracts that they've had for these films... You know, there there hasn't been anything that mentions streaming specifically and anything that does mention streaming specifically, the the amount of money that they're making off of each click is just so much worse 
because of course that's how mm-hmm. things work. You know, as soon as there's an excuse to change things, it won't be in their favor. It'll be in the favor of Bob Iger, who could realistically take like I don't know a fifty percent pay cut, and his life would be no different, <laughs> right? Like, mm-hmm. oh no, mm-hmm. oh I can't buy a second island this year. Like, what are you? What? Are, what? Are you, <laughs> why are you hoarding everything? Yeah. Your lifestyle isn't going to fucking change. Like, what are you doing? You're not spending all that money in a year. You're just hoarding it. You're a piece of shit. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've mentioned it before. In our lifetimes, it went from billionaire status being like a comical, literal comic book trait for Batman. And now it's just like a reality. Like, there's just a bunch of them and they just own everything. There's like yeah. nothing left. <laughs> they buy Twitter on yeah. a whim. <laughs> Very mm-hmm. useful. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of that, man. I opened Twitter the other day, right? And like the main tweet that was at the top of my timeline, it was a pirated French copy of Across the Spider-Verse, like the whole movie. Like yeah. Yeah. pretty good quality. Like yeah. <laughs> it's just like what is going on? <laughs> yeah. The it's website's crazy. like mostly bots at this point. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's yeah, it's terrible that site. And it's like, you know, you open up Twitter on the main page, it's usually Elon Musk posts. I've blocked you know, him so I don't just see like, him. It's, <laughs> I got sick of it. Uh, well, I mean, like, if you go, like, if you go on Indigo mode, right, you just go to, like, Twitter.com, and, like, you, mm. the top post is usually an Elon Musk thing. It's, like, his spaceship that blew up. <laughs> yeah, sharing his, like, Elden Ring build or whatever yeah. he's doing, whatever game he's Yeah, playing. right. It's just, it's just, like, a promotional tool for him now. It's, it's his own truth and social. Like, which, you know, yeah. like Trump made his own website so that he could just be the main character of it. And now Elon bought Twitter so he can do the same thing. Yeah, so he could be the main character. Just to yeah, feed right. the egos. Exactly. Yeah, very useful. It's a public town square. Uh, an internet <laughs> town square, or whatever the fuck he said. Yeah, he fucking destroyed <laughs> Unless it. you say the word cis, apparently, which is going to get you banned. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can't say that. That's a, that's a, 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 slur, now. a slur now. Yeah, that's which a slur. Which is fascinating. fascinating. Yeah, that is actually fucking crazy. Yeah. What a crazy mm-hmm. story that was in and of itself. Man. Yeah. Did, did, would they rather be called cisgender? Is that the thing? Or they just don't want to like have any classification and they're just like, no, I'm normal. I'm not anything. Yeah, they're just normal. And, and normal. yeah, they're normal. <laughs> like, what, is, is hetero a slur now? Like, is, heter- you can't, is heterosexual a slur? Is that like, or, if you're being consistent, then that would be two, right? Like, I don't understand what you're saying. Right? Straight people are normal. Everyone else are, is gay. Everyone else That's is gay. The, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, people thought he was like Iron Man as well when he first like was appearing on podcasts oh, yeah. and stuff. <laughs> so like cringy. <laughs> There's some really <laughs> funny yeah. YouTube content that aged like milk of like people being like, yeah. this guy's the Iron Man. It was a it was such a Reddit well, thing like- <laughs> at the time, you know? Like just yeah, everybody just circle so drinking. Reddit. Like, Oh, he's gonna save those Chilean children that are lost in the mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he just called That's someone right, a pedophile. He, he just called the guy a pedophile. That's right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, you make my idea don't look good. You must want to fuck the kids. <laughs> like, what are you talking oh, about? Yeah. He's such a joke yeah. now. Like, <laughs> so insane. Yeah, he's he's a total joke. Yeah, that happened to a lot of those guys now. He's got this whole like army of fans on Twitter, and there's this like particularly like cringe uh, tweet that I've seen like shared um, relating to Spider Verse. It's like you know, <laughs> it's you know that shot in Spider Verse where like Miles he's got his, his his arms behind his back and he kind of like falls into bed. Like the phrasing of the tweet was something like, <laughs> "My last few seconds existing as Elon Musk in Elon Musk's body right before I come back." Some green <laughs> shit like that. Like just, you know, just imagining themselves as him. Like, <laughs> no, I think I think that was like him, him jumping off the building. Like, like the joke right. was he jumps off the building and then he like you know Elon Musk comes back into his body and then he like falls to his death I think that was like the joke actually that'd be fun <laughs> oh, I, I, I might be wrong but I think that was it It was more like a diss at Elon Musk I think oh, man. I might be wrong have you but... seen those like creepy weird accounts of people photo like they're doing these weird I guess AI created images of like what Elon Musk would look like 
as a child and they're like this is what his children would look like even though he like has real children but like <laughs> yeah. that are that are not associated with him anymore <laughs> that have like yeah. cut ties with him yeah, yeah they like, hate like him. yeah 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 there's these people like oh this is like the cutest little girl and it's like just elon musk's face on like a four-year-old and they're all sharing this fucking <laughs> it's like grandma facebook shit it's on twitter now We've got everyone's grandmas so on Twitter now. It's the grandma verse. <laughs> he must love that stuff as well. I see in it. He <laughs> he is like the most desperate for validation person on the fucking planet. Mm. Yeah, seems very insecure. Yeah. Yeah. He's awful. Ruined Twitter. Ruined uh, everything. I mean, uh, if he was, if there's a lot of uh, good things his money could go towards. And he bought Twitter. Yeah, for a ridiculous amount of money. Like yeah. it's just like George Lucas sold Star Wars for like four billion. He bought Twitter for like fucking like forty eight billion dollars or something. <laughs> like <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. So yeah. fucking unnecessary. It's sad. Bree Tarson says, How would you make the worst <laughs> apology video imaginable? Oh yeah, I'd break out the ukulele. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> it can't really get much worse than like the real ones that exist, you know. Like <laughs> that ukulele one is just insane. That was a really creative one. I haven't even heard of that woman until that apology video. Oh, you didn't know who Miranda sings no, was? You remember her in uh, Wreck It Ralph two? No, never heard of her in her life. In her, she's yeah. she's in Wreck It Ralph two. She has like yeah. a whole cameo. Animated. Yeah, which I've never seen. <laughs> oh, right, yeah, good, yeah. Oh, that that aged well. That aged like milk. She's she's in the fucking like driving with fucking Jerry oh, Seinfeld and cars, driving getting with coffee. Yeah, cars. Yeah. Oh god. And she was she's so fucking annoying. Like, I, <laughs> on one of my accounts, I think when I heard the news of of her Netflix show getting canceled, and this was like a decade ago, I was like, fucking finally! Like that was my response. Like she's so annoying, mm -hmm. and it was like obviously like okay, I guess just children love this or something. I'm like, okay. Yeah. And then now it's like, okay, I guess I guess it really was ch child focused. <laughs> and that's yeah, what she, I'm always the one. she was doing things very yeah. inappropriately with children. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 She's grooming kids or whatever. Oh, no, yeah. I looked up on Netflix the other day, though. It's still there to watch that show. Um. <laughs> I mean, if Cuties is still oh, yeah. on the platform, who gives a shit? Whatever. Sure, They're never yeah. going to remove anything from their platform. No, Disney Plus, they remove stuff all the time, yeah. I Yeah, I would rather have things be media preservation than disappear. Yeah, I don't really care if it's still on there. If people want to watch it, whatever. I just thought, like, her, her apology video, I haven't seen it, but I saw some guy, like, put it on Guitar Hero or the modern yeah. day, like, equivalent <laughs> of Guitar Hero. And so he was, like, playing along with it. That's, like, what I watched. That's, funny. I mean, that's, like, really funny. It even has the lyrics on top, like, not a groomer, just a loser, whatever. It's the most tone deaf thing you could create because she it's, it's, yeah. it's almost hilarious if it wasn't like for the subject. <laughs> you could almost understand her being so bullshitty in her response if it were something where she just turned on a live stream and just started talking and it's like, okay, well, you know, you might not realize that you're saying this, but like, how are you taking accountability when you're saying like, oh, it also didn't happen, but I'm taking accountability. Accountability for what? Like all this weird shit about it. Mm. But she wrote an entire song and scripted and rehearsed it down to the fucking sad puppy dog eyes in the camera, like yeah. in between parts. And like she she rhythmically planned it out and still released it. Yeah. And still, yeah, that definitely wasn't a first take. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, absolutely not. Yeah, like, and and didn't understand that, like, you creating it in this way is going to get way more attention on it. And if people are just showing <laughs> yeah. up to your apology video, they're going to discover all the shit you've been doing. Like, you're canceling yourself further. Like, you might have been able to salvage something if you hadn't made that mm -hmm. video. You might have been able to like yeah. just ignore yeah. it. Yeah. You know, maybe get another Disney cameo or something. But after that video, it's like now it's a huge meme. It's a huge news story. Like major news is like covering it. Like yeah. everybody's talking about it. Yeah. Like what the yeah. fuck is he, what were you thinking? <laughs> like she's got kids herself, too. That was totally psychopathic. Yeah, it's totally insane. She seriously thought that like her whole manipulative puppy dog eyes shit would work so well. Yeah. 
that people yeah. would like just feel sorry for her and if she's like oh i made a song and i'm sad about it now like okay mm. now like now it's obvious that you're a manipulator because that's what you're doing <laughs> right now to us yeah to everybody <laughs> right? yeah yeah well apology videos are such a joke now there were there's a, there was one in the latest spider verse wasn't there like miles has to yeah. apologize for his, <laughs> yeah. for yeah. doing a sponsorship <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he did a sponsorship for like baby powder or something. Yeah, boss baby powder. Yeah, that, that was Cross funny. Over, yeah. yeah, that was that was pretty funny. Yeah, totally psychopathic behavior. Fucking insane. I'm wondering how I could make a worse one. Cuz that was the question, right? How do you make a worse <laughs> apology? Like she's really raised the bar. Yeah, I think it's impossible cuz there's that there was the I was it Jake? Yeah. Was it Logan Paul with the suicide forest? I one of the pools. There's like with, it was yeah, Logan. examples so extreme. It's like yeah. What can you even? You can't. You'd have to like be really creative. There's the person. Yeah. Someone did like an interpretive dance to one of them. <laughs> yeah. It, it's unbelievable. Colleen Ball Ballinger, Miranda sings. Like, it, you've decided to make a ukulele song out of it. You turned your whole thing into like a weird joke and still tried to make it serious somehow. You apologized without actually apologizing for anything, so it's not even an apology video because you're just doubling down and saying yeah. like, "Actually, yeah, she didn't uh, this is a toxic gossip train, and you're being mean to me." <sighs> yeah, and it's like, well, you're not apologizing. Well, if you want to apologize for something, you just you just apologize. You say, oh, "I'm sorry, I did that." I shouldn't so have done what, that. what's the point of the video? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's like, like that's all you need to say. Like I shouldn't have done that. No excuse. I'm sorry, but you know, it, it's like but she thinks it's whole okay. Clearly. <laughs> Yeah, like that's all you need, really. Yeah, so I make a fire joke out of this. That's mm -hmm. her thought process. <laughs> yeah, when I was yeah. when I was talking to kids about my sex life and <laughs> doing weird shit with them, like I was just trying to be like a cute little ant. It's like okay, it's still mm -hmm. bad. <laughs> I don't care. Like what you, like, you <laughs> yeah. there should be a moment in your life where you reflect. And even if you had different intentions going into it and they weren't like malicious or whatever, you still did something that affected kids and have them, you know, retrospectively uncomfortable as they're growing up. Right. You still created that situation where they feel bad about it. You should, you should avoid those situations. And if you want to learn from it, you should reflect on it in some way and not just be like, yeah, well, I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> like, fuck off. <laughs> yeah. Try to reflect on it. It's just try. Bad. She's like incapable of it. So, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. this is one of those things where it's like, I didn't like her to begin with. Turns out I'm a great judge of character because a lot of people I don't like <laughs> just wind up getting canceled. Ezra Miller. <laughs> you know, like, turn, turns out I can fucking tell. Gives me a fucking vibe. That was unbelievable the way she did it with the ukulele. That that was just like absolutely. Yeah, crazy. you can't make it up. Like I'm gonna just go yeah. ahead and say it's impossible for us to answer this question because we can't outdo what's already been done. No one's that yeah. creative. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, <laughs> got to be an absolute psychopath to like come up with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even like like yeah like I, there's no other. I'm trying to think of scenarios like. Well, you make a porn, put it on Pornhub and it's apology. Like even that wouldn't have wouldn't be as bad because it would be like so ridiculous. It's not the same level that it's like yeah, this is, it's like is obviously not even serious. Whereas this is like trying yeah. to do something, like be persuasive through emotion. <laughs> you know, like that. Mm -hmm. There's something really fucky about that. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, unbelievable. I'm insane space. <laughs> yeah, it is unbelievable. All right, you got one more. Okay. Let's um, end on this one from uh, Gavin. Um, to the three of you, what is your favorite episode of the podcast so far? And thank you so, and thank you such, f oh man, why do they write it this way? Thank you so much for great entertainment and perspectives. Ralph, best wishes for your future uh, movies. Aww. Hope Alex and Adam discuss them in the future. Thanks. Um, yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, Redditor. <laughs> <What's> <laughs> his, what, what was the username? <laughs> <laughs> um it was Bree, Bree darson oh no that was the last one that was that was a funny no, that was the previous one gavin um, uh, well thank you yeah. yeah um yeah i, I wanted us to have a normal episode before i'm like yeah this is this is the last one for now i'll mm -hmm. be back on yeah so what's my favorite one um, yeah, what some good memories you got? Oh man, the uh, I love the trilogies. We the the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit ones are really good. Mm. 
I'm really proud yeah. of those. The, the, the Hobbit one especially was really good. And the, um, yeah, I like the Heat one. I felt like I expressed myself pretty well on that. Like, that's a good movie. I like mm. express myself pretty well. Because like the good movies are hard to talk about, but I felt like I had a lot to say about that. Yeah, I like like a lot of the recent ones. I feel like we've gotten better or I've gotten better. So that's like, that's a good thing. <laughs> like that you're improving or whatever yeah 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 i like a lot of the recent ones the the valerian one was very funny <laughs> yeah yeah that was a great yeah discussion. that was great i mean we got a lot of mileage out of that one yeah that was really funny that one yeah uh what what about you guys like yeah i'm with you on the trilogy ones i'm a big fan of those um, yeah great idea i just think honestly we've covered like a such a breadth um but I've got to go back to that Southland Tales episode. Um, <laughs> I regularly revisit that discussion. That's <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, yeah. that's a good yeah. Oh, that movie's uh, fucking awful. I think I was a little too lenient on that. <laughs> that's what I mean. I've gotten better, like, uh, seeing through the shit. Yeah, like, that movie sucks. That's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that one's terrible. Um, right. Yeah. Trilogy ones. I agree with that. Fucking Madagascar episode's a, a classic. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, the fucking right. uh, Jenny Nicholson one was really good too. That was a fun one. Yeah, that was a good. Yeah, one she's yeah my favorite guest probably. And um, was a Karsten was a good guest. Karsten was great. Yeah, the, the guest ones are good. When we have like a good like a really good guest like like Matt Johnson and he was he was great. He was very funny. Matt Johnson. I yeah, felt, he's um, he's he's a particular character. I felt great when he laughed at my jokes. <laughs> yeah it felt great it felt great to make like him laugh like because he's a very funny guy so mm -hmm. it's like oh that's good i made him laugh yeah, yeah. did i you see blackberry by the way not yet i'll see yeah. it no it's not yeah i've been meaning to looks it looks amazing it looks great good. <laughs> i can't wait to see it <laughs> yeah i just haven't had time you know i've been too busy watching indiana jones and other three hour long movies i need to like take a break <laughs> yeah the most important films you could watch they're organized by priority. Yeah, every movie's fucking three hours. Yeah. There's a... <laughs> so, so yeah, Alex and I are going to continue uh, doing the podcast. We've had a couple episodes with Ralph already. I know a lot of people are asking, like, oh, are you going to have a third member? We're not thinking about mm -hmm. that right now. It's We're getting, like, really close to, like, film festival season and, like, just fucking busy as shit right now. So, like, we're, we're going to just you know coast <laughs> for the time being maybe we'll have yeah. guests on more frequently um and we'll the see how it goes coast. yeah you guys can do it on your own i mean i i trust you too to like you know do the show mm -hmm. carry it, the torch that's, that's partly why like you know i i'm leaving but i'm like you know i trust these two like they they got good sense of like what the show is mm -hmm. and like they're very smart with their decisions Aww. yeah so I, i'm not like too oh <laughs> i'm not like too worried about the show you know i think you guys will be fine and yeah like uh what like you know i i've i've made movies before i'd like to get more back into that because i've seen like my peers like excel so much in these past mm -hmm. like five years i've been doing this show and it's like you know i like i would like to focus more on that not that the show is like a distraction at all i mean obviously i love doing it but it's like yeah it's hard to like reconcile like shitting on movies for like two hours at a time like <laughs> and and like you know we're like we're being critical of like movies that come out when like i'm a filmmaker myself and i need to like you know put my own stuff out there and yeah chris stuckman recently had uh yeah some thoughts and similar thoughts like that yeah right and it's like you know i don't mind being critical on my own channel like i don't mind calling a spade a spade but like <laughs> You know, if a movie's bad, like, you know, Valerian's a bad movie. We don't, we all <laughs> pretty much all agree on that. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, it, it, when it's on my own channel, I can control the conversation a bit more rather than like mm -hmm. in a podcast setting where it's like, oh yeah, let them, you know, I don't want to like control the show or control anyone's thoughts here. So like, you know, let you guys do your thing and I'm going to do my movies and whatever and hopefully they, they work out well and yeah. But, you know, I'm, I'm pretty confident about it. I'm pretty excited for, like, the future and whatever. But, yeah, it's, you know, 
the show's amazing. It's great. And I'm yeah, really yeah. proud of like no, our say, community. Man. They're they're so yeah enthusiastic and passionate about movies. I'm like really proud of that, especially the the Reddit and all that. Yeah, it's a super yeah, fantastic yeah. group of people we got watching the yeah, show. I'm proud of like the breadth we've made together. Um, it has been like a crazy long amount of time that we've sunk into this, and yeah. I do appreciate mm -hmm. like all the all the work, all the. Like what is it? Five and a half years more. Of like, yeah, that's yeah, just yeah. a long no, ass time. Five and a half um, years. Mm -hmm. right so yeah, I'm really proud of uh, this whole thing. Um, sad to see you go, but I know it has to be done. Um, yeah, yeah. It's it's a, it's gonna be a good thing. And yeah, I'll be back on. There's tons of more bad movies for us to cover. So yeah. <laughs> that's what I told you guys earlier. They yeah. they announced an A24 horror bar Barney. Oh movie. yeah. <laughs> if we if you want to come back on for that, <laughs> yeah. we want to plan for that oh, yeah. one. <laughs> like, yeah. It would feel weird covering that without you, right? So. Oh yeah. There's a few things. Well, yeah. That so. yeah. Hundred percent. That, that would be great. <laughs> All right. That's a good one to aim for. So at the very latest, we'll have yeah. Ralph back on for that one. Yeah. Yeah, it's been great having you on. Um, yeah, I love the community we built together. Yeah, and of course. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you guys for letting me be a part of it. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. An awesome, awesome five years. And uh, yeah, we'll see where things go from here. But yeah, for the meantime... Alex and I are going to record, you know, the next few episodes. We'll see if we, we bring on some guests soon or not. Like, we, we don't know. We're not thinking about it right now. Next, <laughs> the episode after this one's just going to be Alex and I, and then we'll figure, yeah, we'll figure the rest out. I've got a bunch yeah. of shit I'm doing, so. With that being said, I, th I, I guess it's your turn, Alex, to recommend the movie? Yeah. I've been, I've been saving this one for a little while, waiting for the time to strike, and I think it's now. Good fellas. Um, I want to do the 1985. <laughs> 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 no, not a different 80s movie. Uh, the 1985 film uh, Tampopo. Um, I've heard the name. By Juzo Itami. It's, uh, it's known as like a, a noodle western or something crazy. I haven't seen it myself. 1985. Um, okay. Yeah. It's on my watch list. I've just heard very good things. Um, yeah. I need an excuse to, to watch this now. Um, yeah. It, it looks I'll, great. I'll watch it at some point. <laughs> I'll put it on my list. <laughs> I think it is on my list, my watch list. Yeah. Yeah. So, even if I can't discuss it with you guys. Also, I have my own podcast, too, if you guys like, exactly. want to listen to Ralph. Yeah. It's just, let me just mention that. If you want more Ralph in your life, you can just listen to that. You can find it on my main channel. And that is... Uh is that is that just on the uh, Ralph the Movie Maker channel, or do you have it like uploaded to like podcast stuff as well? Like, oh, it's Spotify. on like Spotify. Yeah, if you look okay. up like Ralph the Movie Maker, it should come up. Yeah, sweet. So, yeah, Ralph Solo Podcast. If you're missing Ralph, yeah, so like you'll you'll never hear me again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Daily dose. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. yeah, daily dose of Ralph. Cool, cool. Yeah, right. <laughs> DDR. All right, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very good. All right. It's been Have a, a hey. fucking happy, happy Sardonicast, everybody. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Happy Sardonicast. Thanks for listening. Um, we got, uh, phew, I forgot all the other outro stuff. Oops, oh, yeah. Sorry. sorry. Uh, we put uh, $2 a month, sardonicast.com. You can listen to these episodes early as they're edited. Um, you can uh, sign up for premium it's only $2 a month also patreon.com slash sardonicast also we got merch link in the description also there's a sardonicast highlights channel you should subscribe to that on youtube subscribe to sardonicast hit the bell subscribe to ralph the movie maker channel on youtube hit the fucking bell uh, subscribe to his uh, solo podcast rss feeds or however you do that I'm not a, I'm a fucking boomer I don't fucking know how this shit works um, <laughs> Yeah. Subscribe then, to uh, YMS and uh, Adam Plays, which is actually my channel name now. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> I changed my name. I thought you were taking YMS Gaming. You snatched it up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> You're snagging all of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every possible yeah. combination. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, have a happy Sardonicast. Uh, peace out, everybody. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. All right. Bye-bye.